audiobook title Solis, An Eye Sky Adventure, 01-44, by Rowan. This work belongs to author Rowan. Source Royal Road and Scribble Hub. Chapter 1. My New Life. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Darkness, this was all I could see in front of me. I don't know exactly how long I have been wandering in this empty space with nothing. It could be hours or maybe decades. Maybe you are wondering how I got here and the explanation for this question is very simple. I died, since I was born. I was diagnosed with an incurable disease. Basically my days were numbered from the moment my mother took me in her arms. Because of this disease I have spent my last 20 years lying in a hospital bed. As my family was apparently rich, they always gave me everything I asked for. I say apparently because I never left the hospital to see the house where my father and mother lived. They showed me pictures of the room that would be mine when I was cured. From the pictures I could see that the place was very luxurious. Besides this fact my medications were extremely expensive. But since my parents always bought them and it didn't seem that they spent more than they had, I concluded that we were rich. Normally my disease would kill someone at about 10 years after the discovery of the disease. But thanks to my parents I was able to reach my 20s. And I am extremely grateful to them for that. In addition, I was able to say goodbye to my parents with a smile on my face and thank them for everything they did for me. I really have no regrets. If I had to name one it would be that I didn't have the opportunity to love, as I was always in a hospital bed. I never went out to meet someone and fall in love. I spent my 20 years of life practically reading books about everything I could get my hands on, and also played games about founding countries and military strategies that were my favorite genres. Thanks to this I can say that I gained an incredible amount of knowledge about various things and how they work. I wouldn't consider myself an inventor or anything like that. After all what I learned was basically the method of manufacturing things that had been manufactured before. If I had a chance to start over, I would want to find someone to love like my parents loved me. I would do anything for that person, even if it meant becoming an enemy to the whole world. While all these thoughts were going through my head suddenly a light came on in front of me. That light was emitting a warmth that was strangely comfortable. As if this was the place I was supposed to be. Without realizing it I was slowly approaching the light. It seemed that I was being hypnotized by the light to get closer. Slowly as I was getting closer the light was getting stronger and stronger until my field of vision was completely taken by the light. I can hear noises in the background, but they are too low for me to hear clearly. Ah, again, something unuttered, but again I can't hear, and as if my ears are ringing in some kind of way. Slowly the ringing begins to cease and I can hear clearly what the voice was saying. Ren, my dear Ren, you have finally arrived for us. Whoever was speaking these words was a relatively beautiful woman. Long brown hair and brown eyes made her beautiful face even more beautiful. Tears could be seen coming out of her eyes as a beautiful smile surrounded her lips. While looking at the woman she suddenly turns her head to the side and seems to talk to someone. Unfortunately I can't move my head. With this bizarre situation going on I can only come to one conclusion. I seem to have been reincarnated as a baby. While these thoughts were going through my head suddenly another face entered my field of vision. It was a slightly bearded man. His features looked very much like the person who was probably my mother. Brown hair and eyes. Plus he was quite handsome too, apparently. I won't have to worry about looks. Hi Rin, I'm your father. Said the man as a smile surrounded their faces. Although I can't move properly that doesn't mean I can't do anything. I was trying for a while and I seemed to be able to use my mouth even decently. But I doubt I can utter words but that should be enough as a fan service. Q. After my words the man who is probably my father became so emotional that he began to cry. They seemed to be extremely loving parents since my father was happy enough to cry over a simple noise that I spoke randomly. While being enveloped in this cozy feeling my stomach suddenly started to show signs that it needed food. Since I can't talk, I guess the only way to ask for food is to cry. I wouldn't really cry just because I'm hungry but since food is important for a growing baby, I couldn't escape it so. Getting ready for it I compress all the air I can into my newborn lungs before letting out a huge noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
As soon as I started crying my father got a confused face not knowing what to do. I think he's hungry. Please give him to me honey. It's time for our rent to eat. As soon as my mother said this to my father, he passed me into her arms and she quickly put my head close to her chest. As soon as I was close enough, I grabbed my mother's breast carefully so as not to hurt her and sucked on the milk nipple. A sweet taste began to enter my mouth going straight to my stomach. I could easily say that this was the most delicious milk I had ever tasted. Drink slowly my darling Ren, my mother said as she stroked my head with her delicate hand. At that moment I wanted time to stand still so that I could enjoy this moment forever. 11. Chapter 2. Finding out about the world. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. My life in this new world has been very satisfying. It has been one year since I was reincarnated here. In the one year that I have been here I have started to notice several things in this new world. I still cannot walk and it has made it impossible for me to leave the house. First of all, this world seems to be in a medieval era. I assume this by the way my house is built. The walls are made of stone but there is no painting or anything like that. It's all done in a very crude way if I may say so. Even my house is quite simple. I could tell very quickly that we were not rich. My father seems to be a woodcutter while my mother is a housewife. I would say that we don't starve. We get enough to eat and our house is quite cozy for me. Besides, money couldn't give me a healthy body if I was born with an incurable disease. So the fact that I was born healthy for me is already a fortune. Furthermore, our house has a small library. Probably not even 15 books in there. So I said small. But still it was enough for me to understand this world. My mother almost always caught me while I was dragging myself to go to the library but I am sure she thinks I am just curious about it. I mean, who in their right mind would believe that a one-year-old baby could read books? But anyway, what I have found out so far about this world is, the year we are in is 989 of the Solis calendar. Even Solis seems to be the name of the planet we are on. But from what I understood from these books I was reading it seems that the people here don't know that there is the universe outside the planet and stuff like that. In fact, they don't even know what exists on the other side of the sea. In a simpler way to explain my family and I live in a continent which should be pretty obvious to anyone. Within this continent there are a total of five kingdoms. The kingdom we are currently in is called Solaris. This is a name apparently given to the kingdom thanks to the lineage of queens and princesses that have the greatest beauty of all the kingdoms. By the way I overheard a conversation between my parents and some neighbors that the youngest princess of our kingdom was born on the same day and at the same time as me. She is the youngest sister of a family of six people, having two brothers and one sister. This is really a frightening coincidence. But well, this is none of my business. Our social statuses are too different for me to have any contact with her. Back to the subject. Our kingdom is surrounded by snow-capped mountains. Thanks to this the winters here are a bit harsh but to tell you the truth it's not that cold. I would say it's the same level of cold you would feel in a cold country in my old world. But it seems that for people from the outside this is quite a cold place. Geographically speaking our kingdom seems to be the easiest to defend strategically speaking. But still I would like to ask myself why we are considered the weakest kingdom in the continent. After our kingdom we have the kingdom of Belfry, Arcolia, Crystal, and Storn. Unfortunately in the books we had at home there wasn't much information about the other kingdoms. But apparently the kingdom that is closest to us is the kingdom of Storn. It is the third strongest kingdom in the continent. Moreover, apparently our kingdom and the kingdom of Storn don't get along very well. I just hope that a war doesn't start out of nowhere because of power. Another thing I discovered while reading the books is that in this world magic doesn't exist. This made me a little sad in the beginning but being honest I got used to it so today I don't even care about it anymore. Apart from that there are no monsters here either. There are one or another animal that didn't exist on earth like a giant lizard that is used as a mount or the cows that here have a lot of hair and have huge horns coming out of their heads. While reading the books in front of me I was suddenly grabbed and suspended into the air. As soon as I looked back to see who was holding me, I saw my mother's face with a smile on her face. What were you doing dear? Said my mother looking immediately afterwards at the books I was reading. 
Fufu, you really seem to like these old books. Arin is so smart. Although my mom is saying this, I am totally sure that she doesn't think I am really reading these books. But mom, today is the day that I am really going to take you by surprise. Actually, I have been able to do this for a while now. But I wanted to surprise my mom and dad so I trained myself as much as I could to do this perfectly. Gathering the air in my lungs I utter my first sentence since I was reincarnated into this world. Mama, after my mother heard this, it seemed that she had locked up. I was a little worried as she just kept looking at me with her mouth open. But soon my worry was ceased with a scream that my mother gave. Bread the rin the rin he. But no matter how hard my mother tried she couldn't utter any words. And then, seconds after my mother screams, heavy footsteps could be heard coming towards where we were standing. What's wrong Layla? Is our Ren okay? What happened to him? Shouted my father back to my mother. From the way he was saying it he clearly thought I was hurt or sick. Ren he 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 said mommy for the first time. Said my mother with a huge smile on her face as she jumped up and down causing me to start spinning. To be honest this is making me nauseous. Oh hi, is that true honey? Come on Ren, say it daddy. Come on Ren, I know you can do it. Said my father while jumping up and down with my mother. This scene was past the point of embarrassment. Daddy, mommy. Again, the room went silent. I wonder if they will do this every time. I say something. But seconds later they both started jumping again while shouting with joy. Our Rin is the cutest kid in the world. Said my mom. Really my parents are no good. 10. Chapter 3. First Steps. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Another year went by quietly as I adjusted to this world. I turned two years old. We had a celebration with that but I wouldn't call it a party. It was just a dinner a little better taken care of than usual. But still it felt like my parents were celebrating my birthday. Also, I was already able to walk. At first my parents thought this was extremely strange so I decided to pretend that I had fallen down on the spot, probably because they thought I was training to start walking. And a month after showing them that I was trying my best to walk I decided it was time to show them that I had made it. Bread come see our Ren, he finally made it, shouted my mother as she called my father looked at me in amazement. I had gotten used to these eccentric parents so I didn't even care anymore. They practically had this reaction to anything I did. Again, heavy footsteps could be heard approaching where we were standing. I wondered how many times I had heard those same footsteps. As soon as my father arrived his eyes lit up when he saw me standing there. It felt like he was fulfilling his dream or something. As I thought about it my dad and mom opened their arms and started calling me. Come here honey, mommy knows you can do it. My mom said, come on sonny, daddy will be waiting for you with mommy. Said my father, I open a smile in my mind that is not conveyed to my childish face and immediately start walking towards my parents. It wouldn't do any harm to hold this moment for them. Besides, this will be a good memory for both me and them. I start walking slowly towards my parents. Their eyes remained hopeful while I could see the nervousness on their faces fearing that I would fall again. Being honest it was impossible for me to fall. I had been walking for over a month so I already had enough confidence not to mess it up. Come on honey you're close, said my mother encouraging me. As soon as I got close enough my mom and dad hugged me with all their might. That warmth again filled me with happiness. I loved those moments with my parents. Mom knew you would make it Ren. My mother said as tears of happiness fell from her face. My father put his hand on top of my head and started to mess up my hair. Seeing their smiles made me truly happy. They were the people I loved the most at the moment. Both for giving me life and for raising me with love and care. But that doesn't mean that I forgot my old parents. I will probably be grateful for them all my life. A few weeks later while walking around the house I started to notice something. Apparently not everyone was literate. I took as reference my mother who could only read basic things and my father who could neither read nor write. I don't know why. But as soon as I saw the letters of this world, I could understand perfectly what was written. And whenever I wrote something it came out with the language of this world. This doesn't mean that I couldn't write with the languages of my other world. I could speak three languages, Japanese, English, and Russian, if I wrote thinking about the language in which I wanted it to be written. 
It came out in the language of my old world. If I simply wrote without thinking much about the language, it came out in the language of this world. My parents sometimes saw me writing in Japanese around the house, but they probably thought I was drawing random things since from their point of view what I was drawing looked like symbols. Also now that I could walk relatively well, I would spend a lot of time at the window in my house. Usually I would stop by the window and call out to my mother. She would soon understand what I wanted to do so she would take a box and put me up there. You might be wondering why my mother would leave me on top of a box without worrying about me falling. The truth is that my parents probably already understood that I was not totally ordinary. Or rather, they probably think I have an above average intelligence. So they also know that I have a good understanding of things. Anyway the purpose of all this was to finally see what it was like from the outside, apparently. We live in a small town that doesn't even have 1,000 inhabitants that is located two days away from the kingdom. Once a week a man comes to our small town with a cart pulled by an earth lizard wanting to negotiate things. These are the moments I most look forward to since usually the man brings news from inside the kingdom. As I was leaning against the window watching the movement of people outside huddling to buy the man's goods a conversation suddenly starts. Hey do you have any new news about the newborn princess? A woman asked the man. Let's see, even though she is only two years old she is being considered the most beautiful princess on the continent. It is said that she is so beautiful that no matter who sees her will fall in love instantly, said the man. They say that her silver hair is as beautiful as the falling snow, and her golden eyes shine brighter than yours at your peak. This story was really getting interesting, although I don't think I will ever have any contact with the princess that doesn't mean I'm not interested in things like that. I am a man after all who wouldn't want to have a girlfriend that everyone says is the most beautiful on the continent. 8. Chapter 4. New Family Member If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. My third year in this world was almost over. I was already three years old and still growing healthy thanks to my parents. This year was one of the most special for me. My mother was pregnant with a new child. In my past life I had no siblings, so for me this would be a whole new experience. I was very excited to see my new brother or sister. Furthermore, I found out that there is a school in our small town that I would attend when I turned eight. But to be honest I am not that interested in it. From what I have heard from some children it seems that the learning in that world is quite inferior to my old one. But even with all of this I decided to enter the school. I made this decision for two reasons. The first is that my parents really want me to learn new things. Although they think I'm pretty smart for a three-year-old that doesn't mean they know that I basically already know all the knowledge that they will teach me at school. The second reason is that I want to see my parents happy. And since I'm going to school, I want to be the best. These were the thoughts that were going through my head right now. By the way I was sitting on a chair in the kitchen, the reason you asked me. My mother is in the room giving birth to my brother or sister, a woman who apparently is the doctor of this city I live in came to assist my mother's delivery. They sent me to the kitchen where they asked me to wait so here, I am, while waiting obediently suddenly I hear a cry coming from the house. Yeah, yeah. Presently this noise could be heard throughout the house, this could only mean one thing, I got down from the chair I was sitting from and ran towards my parents room. As soon as I got in front of the door, I saw the doctor coming out of the room. She gave me a slight smile and opened the door slightly giving me passage to enter. As soon as I entered I saw my father and mother. My mother was holding a baby in her hands while sweat dripped from her face showing how tired she was. All I could see was the little baby that my mother was holding in her arms. This feeling that was welling up inside my chest was something I had never felt before. It was a warm and at the same time mysterious feeling. Come Rin, come see your little sister. My mother said, following her words, I slowly approached the bed while looking mesmerized at the little being who was sleeping soundly in my mother's arms. As soon as I got close my father approached me and lifted me toward the bed. As soon as I got close enough my mother brought my sister close to me. Her name is Anna. My mother said Anna's beautiful eyes were closed as a slow breath came out of her mouth. I slowly brought my hand closer to her face but had my finger held by her small hand. Her eyes slowly opened and she gave a big smile as soon as she saw me. Q. That was an extremely special moment for me. 
her big round eyes looking at me while an innocent smile adorned her small lip. At that moment a truth hit me. My sister was extremely cute. After the birth of my sister another year had passed. Nothing so interesting happened in the meantime except for the salesman who came once a week to our small town. And almost every time he came here the main subject always ended up being the princess and her beauty. I am currently five years old while my sister turned two. She and I got along extremely well. My sister always dragged herself while following me around. I found this gesture extremely cute so I always had a smile on my face when this happened. At this point my parents already thought I was extremely responsible even though I was only five years old, even when they needed to go somewhere. They didn't hesitate to ask me to take care of Anna until they got back. My speech is also quite fluent. I have spoken in front of my parents before but in order not to get too weird about the fact that a five-year-old can speak as if he were ten. I try my best to pretend to speak with some degree of difficulty. I was sitting on a chair looking outside through the window. Snow was falling from the roof of our house. It was cold season so we were wearing quite thick clothes to help us get through the cold. Anna was sitting on my lap as she stared in wonder at the snow falling outside. I stretch my arm outside and a small snowflake falls on my hand. As soon as I feel the cold of the flake on my mother, I bring it close to Anna's face who looks with sparkling eyes at what was in my hand. This must be something extremely magical for Anna since today is her first year seeing snow. Well anyway I don't think she understands what she is seeing. But just seeing Anna's smile as she looked at the snow falling outside is enough for me. Suddenly a delicious smell starts to waft to my nostrils. Usually the only times we had some sort of feast at home was when it was my birthday or when something extremely important happened. This year we would be celebrating Anna's birth. Seconds after that my mother appears and takes Anna in her arms holding out her hand to me. Come on honey, your father is almost drooling, said my mother with a beautiful smile on her face. As soon as I took my mother's hand we walked towards the table. These moments of happiness I would do everything to protect them and I would use all the knowledge I have for that, even if they called me a demon or monster in the end. 8. Chapter 5. Checkers Game If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. My sister and I were growing up without any problems and receiving lots of love from our parents. I was currently 5 years old while my sister was 2. My mom and dad already let me out of the house to walk around. But even then, they still told me not to go too far away so I always stayed relatively close to home. Another thing that has changed is that now I no longer have to pretend that my speech is slurred. Now that I am 5 years old, I think it is the perfect age to stop pretending. Another reason I made this decision is that it was honestly tiresome to pretend all the time whenever I needed to speak. And that brings us to today. I was looking for some kind of game that I could play with my sister. Although she is still only two years old this will be good to help Anna in her thinking and concentration. While thinking about this I make my way to the kitchen where I find my father sitting at the table. Daddy can you help me with something? As soon as I called out, he turned to me and placed me on his lap. Sure Ren, but what exactly do you need my help with? As soon as my father asked this, I began to elaborate to him what I wanted him to do for me. I want to make something so I can play with Anna. So I thought I would make a game. I wanted dad to help me with that. Well I don't mind. But I need you to instruct me how to do it. After that my father and I made our way to one of the rooms in the house where we were storing wood. Alright, what should I do first Ren? After my father's question I pointed to one of the logs in the room and the axe. First I want you to cut this piece of wood and make it into a square shape. Following my words my father does what I asked and soon the piece of wood turns into a square. It's not perfect but it looks pretty good. It's pretty close to what I had in mind. Is that good? Make it a little smaller. After that my father makes it even smaller looking even more like the board I had seen in my previous life. That's good. Now I need 24 round pieces that fit inside the squares. As soon as I said that my father picked up a small piece of wood and a knife, seconds later he showed me what he had made. That way? Yes, exactly like that. Now I just need 23 more of these pieces. After that my father started to make one piece after another while I painted some of them black with a piece of charcoal. As soon as we finished, 
I wiped the sweat from my face and a slight smile broke out on my face seeing that it turned out exactly as I had imagined. In fact it was even better since we didn't have the necessary materials to make the game. I explained the rules to my father, and soon we started playing a game. Five minutes after we started the game, I won a complete victory against him. That is a pretty interesting and fun game. But where did you get the idea to make a game like that from? Nowhere. I just thought of making a game and this idea came to my mind. I lied to my father. For a start I don't intend to tell anyone that I died and was reincarnated here. Although it is true that I have the memories of my old life this is a life that has passed. Here and now I am and always will be Ren. Another time had passed. I was now seven years old while Anna was four. I spent a lot of time playing checkers with Anna. We had a lot of fun playing together. The game became so popular that I and some other children would gather at my house to play. It was at one of these gatherings that we decided to play at the front of our house. While we were playing, I hear a voice that didn't sound like any of our friends or the neighbors. Hey you kids, what are you doing? The one who asked this after slipping into the middle of our wheel was the man who came to our small town to sell things. It was the merchant. By the way, today was the day he came, right? I thought. Then immediately replied the man as I continued to play against my opponent. We are playing checkers. Checkers? Yes. After that the man kept looking at the game as if he was thinking about something. Hey, would you guys mind if I played a game of this so-called checkers? After the man's question I looked at the people who would be playing and saw that none of them seemed bothered by the idea. Alright then, you can be next. As soon as I said that I captured the last piece from my friend winning the game. Damn, as usual you are good at this, said my friend leaving while a sad look surrounded his face. You can come now sir. I was about to ask the man to sit down but I remembered that I didn't know his name. Ah ha ha ha. I was so intrigued by this game that I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Bernard. Likewise, my name is Ren. After my words Bernard looked at me surprised for a few seconds before returning to his normal posture. What happened? I'm sorry if this sounds rude. I was surprised for a moment, since you didn't seem to be that well versed in etiquette. Hmm? What do you mean by that? After my words again Bernard seems surprised by something. Don't tell me you haven't noticed? Sorry but I still don't know what you are talking about. I just introduced myself as every Japanese would introduce himself. Was that so strange? I wondered wondering what all the surprise was about. I don't think I introduced myself in some grandiose way or anything. I think I introduced myself like any ordinary Japanese person. 9. Chapter 6. Easily Winning the Checkers Game If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Anyway, I will explain the rules to you. As soon as I said this Bernard nodded his head and waited patiently for my explanation. As you can see, we have this small square table. This is called the board. These squares inside are called squares. The object of the game is to capture all the opponent's pieces. The piece can only move forward and diagonally. Besides, you cannot move back the pieces that you have already moved forward. As I was explaining to Bernard, I saw that Bernard seemed to have a question about something. Do you have any questions? I asked. What happens if my piece reaches the end of its base? At his question I let out a small smile before answering. If that happens you make checkers, your piece can move both forward and backward. Plus you can move as many squares as you want. At my reply Bernard let out a surprised sound. Ho ho, so there was such a rule. This game sounds extremely interesting. Let's play a game. Sure. And with that we started playing the game. At first Edward seemed a bit lost so I took it easy on him until he started to get used to it. Which didn't take long. A few minutes later we were at the end of the game. I was at a clear disadvantage as Bernard had four pieces left while I only had one. But unfortunately for him I refused to lose here in front of Anna. Since I brought this game into this world I have never lost. And I don't intend to lose today. I let out a small smile which caught Bernard's attention. Why are you smiling? I see that I am the one with the best chance of winning. Bernard asked. Normally you would be right. But unfortunately for you your opponent is me. As soon as I said that I made a move of a professional I had seen in my previous life capturing all of Bernard's pieces. Did you still have more tricks up your sleeve? 
said one of my friends seeing the move I had just made, but of course, a true master never reveals his strategy so soon, I said with a smile on my face, as soon as I turned to Bernard, I noticed he had his hand on his chin as he was thinking about something, is there a problem Sir Bernard, I asked worried that something was wrong, it's nothing, and just that I found this game more fun than I expected, may I ask who created this game, as soon as Bernard asked that, Anna who was standing next to me soon spoke up. I know, the one who made the game was Oni Aichan, said Anna. Bernard was surprised by my sister's answer and soon after looked at me with wide eyes but soon after his eyes changed to curiosity. Are you sure little girl? As soon as Bernard said this Anna stewed her cheeks showing that she was angry at what Bernard just said. I'm not lying, it was really Oni Aichan who created this game. Anna said with her cheeks stewed and her arms crossed. Sorry if I was rude little girl, and that it is kind of hard to believe that a child could create such a simple game, but at the same time with so many possibilities. By the way how old are you kid? Me? I'm seven. After my words Bernard's eyes widened even more. Now it's even harder to believe. After Bernard's words he stared at me for a while, as if he was thinking about something. After a few seconds he seems to have decided something and stands up. All right kid, can I talk to your parents? I was confused by his question. Why does he want to talk to my parents, not because he lost to me? With this thought in mind I say goodbye to my friends and take him to my house. I don't care, let's go Anna. I took Anna's hand and walked to my house. Bernard was following right behind me. As soon as I entered my house, I called my mom and dad. M.O.M. Dad, someone wants to talk to you. As soon as I said that I turned to Bernard and asked him to sit on a chair. They should be here soon. Usually by now my father is cutting logs at the back of the house and my mother is tidying up the rooms. You can sit in this chair until they come. I said as I moved to the kitchen. As soon as I got to the kitchen, I took a wooden cup from the shelf and filled it with the water from the bucket. In case you are wondering why we don't have spouts to get water the answer is quite simple. It's not that we don't have any. It's simply because it doesn't exist. From what I understand in most cities and kingdoms it works the same way. In the case of cities there is always a well from which we draw water with buckets and then bring that bucket home so we can use water. If you ask me if this isn't a lot of work, clearly it is. But unfortunately, we have no choice, I could fix it. But there is no way they will listen to a five-year-old for a problem that involves the entire city. While I was thinking about this I went back to the table and noticed that Bernard was holding some papers. So I accidentally put the water on the table and took a look at the papers. Some math calculations could be seen on the paper. While I was looking, I noticed that one was wrong so I immediately told Bernard. This calculation is wrong. As soon as I said this Bernard turned to me with a surprised look on his face before turning to the paper and looking closely at where I had said it was wrong. After a few seconds he looked at me with surprised eyes before asking, Kid are you already attending school? Not yet, I'm only seven after all. At my answer Bernard was even more incredulous and asked again, Then how did you manage to calculate so fast to realize you were wrong? Huh, what is this man saying? I just added up the numbers and subtracted. What's so hard about that? I thought as I looked at Bernard. 6. Chapter 7. Agreement. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. As I was thinking about what Bernard meant by this my parents arrived in the room where they were standing, their eyes widening when they saw who was calling out to them. As soon as my parents sat down in the chair across from Bernard my father started the conversation. So, Mr. Bernard, how can we help you? My father asked. No need for you sir, just Bernard is fine. About the reason for my visit, it is quite simple actually. While selling my wares to the villagers I saw your son and some children playing this such a game of drafts. As soon as he said this my parents looked at me and then turned their gaze to Bernard. Your daughter told me that your oldest son created this game, is that true? As soon as he said this my parents looked at each other before turning their attention back to Bernard. Well yes it is true that it was our son who created this game. With the answer my father gave Bernard his face took on a surprised expression again before a smile opened on his face. I could tell from here that he probably thinks he found someone interesting. 
Also, your son seems to know math, and he knows enough to do middle grade math with amazing speed. As soon as he said this my parents' faces turned into expressions of astonishment. They looked at me and I could see in their eyes that they couldn't believe what they were hearing. But seriously, what do you mean middle grade math? Wasn't that just addition and subtraction? If that was middle grade then what do they consider advanced grade in this world? Did either of you two teach him math or something? Your son already told me that he is not yet eight years old so he must not have learned it in school. When Bernard asked this, my parents looked at each other and shook their heads to the side. That's impossible for us. I'm only a housewife and my husband is a simple woodcutter. Besides, my husband and I can barely read. We wouldn't have enough knowledge to teach from mathematics. This world has an extremely low literacy rate. To tell you the truth, for every 1,000 commoners at most 250 can read and only 100 can read and write. Also, although they teach mathematics in school, they only teach subtraction and addition. And from what I could see the mathematics of this world is quite backward. They use summation methods that are extremely old and time consuming. Ah, but I remember that since Rin was one year old, he would always go to the storage room in our house and look at books almost all day. But since he was just a child, we thought he was just interested or playing. After my mother said this Bernard made an expression as if something had clicked in his mind. I've heard reports of some people being able to read from the age of two. The most recent report was that of Princess Annie Tulipo Solaris. Nowadays she is considered the rarest jewel in the kingdom. Bernard said as he looked at my parents. And it is possible that your son has the same if not even more potential than she does. As soon as Bernard said this my parents looked at Bernard in amazement. Being honest I think your son has a bright future ahead of him. As Bernard and my parents talked what was going through my mind was the name of the princess which I had never heard before. It was a beautiful name indeed. While these thoughts were going around my head the conversation between my parents and Bernard was progressing. It seemed that finally Bernard had gotten to the main point. Oh, I seem to have dragged the subject a lot about why I came here. What do you think about letting me sell the game? I am sure many nobles would like this game. It is simple but also requires a bit of strategy. I am sure it will be popular. Besides, you will also get a share from the sales of the game. What do you say? After Bernard's words my parents were surprised to suddenly know that a children's game I made when I was five years old could make money. My parents looked at me along with Bernard. I guess they are leaving the final decision to me. I put my hand on my chin and started to think about it. Although we don't have much money it's not like we are poor. We get enough to not starve which for me is enough. I think for me it would be more advantageous if I sold the game to him and got something that would help the work of the residents in return. While thinking about what might be good to trade in the game, I suddenly remember something. If I could do that, I am sure it would help the people living in this town a lot. Mr. Bernard, instead of giving us money for the game how would you like to hear a request from me? Hearing my suggestion Bernard looks at me as he seemed to think of something. Soon after he speaks what was on his mind. Could you know I'm a merchant right? Above anything else what I seek is profit I know you said your game would profit but I can't accept a request that would put me at a disadvantage. You don't have to worry about that if this works. I am sure you would make vast profits from my idea. I also don't mind if you take all the money that comes from this. But in return I want you to give my city for free the product I will make. At my words Bernard seemed to be amazed as he looked at me. His face clearly said that something unbelievable was happening in front of him. Sometimes I forget that you are only seven years old. Bernard said as a smile was present on his face. All right, let's hear what you have to say. 6. Chapter 8. Manual Water Pump Diagram If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After my conversation with Bernard a week had passed, basically I told him that I intended to create something that would help solve the water problem. At least help enough so that we would no longer need to go so far away just to get water. Since I needed some time to create in detail what we would need to build I told him to come back in a week's time which would already coincide with the day he would return to our town to sell new products. To summarize what I was thinking of creating this would be a manual water pump. It was extremely problematic the way we do it to get water. 
First we would have to go to the well after that we would tie a rope to the bucket, and then throw it into the can. This was something extremely inconvenient. After all, most of the time you would already be tired by the simple fact of needing to pull a rope with an extremely heavy bucket. Because of the water to be able to carry this bucket to your house, with the hand pump this work would be cut in half. Besides, from what I know throughout the continent the method is the same, it seems that they had not even thought of another way to make the water go to them. But at the moment instead of making a whole system of pipes I need to do this by steps. Because first I need to convince Bernard that what I am telling him is true. And so, the day of Bernard's visit had arrived. Actually we were me, my father, my mother, and Bernard sitting on chairs in the kitchen. Actually Bernard was looking at a piece of paper with a diagram on it. On this diagram was the way to build the manual water pump. After looking at the paper Bernard looks at me while letting out a sigh. I have to say, if you are not a genius that is born every generation then I don't know what you are. Being honest this is totally revolutionary. I smile at Bernard's response. If that works that is, Bernard said with a serious look on his face. First of all, how can you be sure that this will work the way you say it will? At Bernard's answer I let out a smile and answered him. If I had to explain it in a simple way the pressure will make the water rise. Edward looked at me with a confused face probably not understanding what I meant. But how should I answer his question? My knowledge comes basically from books. Although I know it will work, I don't know if he would understand if I explain it in a scientific way. Basically, the hand water pump sucks the water coming through one tube into the cylinder and then pushes it out through the other tube. But even with my explanations it didn't seem that Bernard and my parents were understanding what I was saying. Anyway, you just need to understand that it will work the way it is illustrated in the diagram. Hearing my words Bernard nodded his head before continuing the conversation. Alright, to tell you the truth something is telling me that your idea can really work. First I will go back to the capital. I doubt that here there is any blacksmith good enough to create what you are showing here. After that I will talk to the merchant's guild to patent this invention with the name of hand water pump but you don't have to worry too much about this matter. The leader of the merchant's guild and a friend of mine so it shouldn't take long at all. But they will probably want me to put the name of the inventor. What name should I put in this case? After Bernard's question I think about it for a while. At first, I thought of just putting my name but I soon discarded that idea. And better to go for a pseudonym for the moment. After thinking for a few minutes I turn my gaze to Bernard and tell him about which name to put. Ask them to patent it with the name of X. Also, do not reveal the age of who made it for now. When I can go to the guild, I will introduce myself. I do not want to draw too much attention for now. Hearing my answer my father and Bernard get confused expressions on their faces. X okay, that's fine, you can leave it to me. After that Bernard left my house towards his wagon to continue his trip to the capital. He told me he would go to a blacksmith he knows so he could make a prototype of the manual water pump. After that he would return with the prototype and I would test it here. If it works as planned it would be sold in mass a while later, in addition. Bernard also told me that he was going to patent the game of checkers that I had created under the name X. Apparently, he was a bit miffed that I wasn't taking any credit for it. Plus this new business I was entrusting entirely to him. So he would share a portion of the profits from the game with me. Of course the game was a tremendous success in the capital and seems to be spreading to the other kingdoms. Apparently the game is popular with both the nobility and the commoners. It seems that the game gained two versions. One made entirely of gold that is sold only to the nobles and another made normally with wood to be sold among the commoners. The nobles really have strange ways of spending their money. With this in mind I was waiting for Bernard to return so that we could test the manual water pump, which didn't take long. Again a week passed quickly and the day came when Bernard would arrive. I was especially looking forward to this. After all, this was something that I had helped develop myself. Although it wasn't really me who had created it, it doesn't change the fact that it didn't exist in this world. 6. Chapter 9. Successful Experiment If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. While waiting outside my house for Bernard to arrive I looked at the people walking down the street. 
Today would be the day Bernard would come to my town and also today would be the day we would test the manual water pump. While I was thinking about this I looked again at the road in the distance. Nothing seemed out of place. But it was while I was thinking about this that suddenly a huge cloud of dust began to form in the distance. After a few seconds it was possible to see a lizard pulling a cart. No doubt that was Bernard's cart. A short time later the wagon had arrived and was parked near the entrance. I ran to the wagon while waiting to meet up with Bernard. As soon as I reached the wagon Bernard was easily seen in the front. Beside him was a man I didn't remember seeing yet. Just as I expected Bernard got off the wagon while having a smile on his face. The man who was with Bernard also got off the wagon while following Bernard. The man has short brown hair. His eyes are relatively normal. A beard was growing on his face giving the man a coarse look. While wondering who the man was Bernard came toward me and greeted me. Good to see you Ren. I can see you are excited to see your invention taking shape. Bernard said as he extended his hand to me. As I took his hand to return the gesture a thick, raspy voice sounded behind Bernard. Hey Bernard, is that the genius brat you told me invented this? Said the man as he held up the diagram I had written. That's right, this here is Ren, or Inventor X if you prefer. After Bernard's words the man approached me while looking at me. As soon as he got closer, he started looking me up and down as if he was analyzing me. For some reason this was making me uncomfortable. I felt like I had fallen into a tiger's den. Who is your friend, Bernard? As soon as I said that Bernard made a surprised expression finally remembering that he had not yet introduced me to his friend. Sorry about that, this here is Henry. He is the blacksmith I told you about. He is the one who built your manual water pump. Bernard said as he pointed to Henry who continued to look me up and down. After a few seconds Henry seemed to have finished inspecting me. Soon he turned to Bernard again. Are you sure it was this brat who thought of this? I can't see anything special about him. Besides, isn't he just a kid? At Henry's question, Bernard simply smiled as he answered. If I were you, I wouldn't mistake him for just a child. Bernard said leaving Henry with a scowl on his face. If you with your eyes are saying that, he must really have something. Said Henry as he looked at me. His gaze seemed to want to unravel every mystery of my being. Anyway, let's get to the main subject. Bernard said moving to the back of the wagon. Bernard's wagon was the kind where the driver was in the front while the load was in the back. As soon as he turned back to us in his hands was my long-awaited invention. Really something that I had helped design was right in front of me. I must have a huge smile on my face right now. The pipes are inside the wagon. We just need to install and then test. If everything works perfectly as it should we will start mass producing. Bernard said with a smile on his face. After this we took everything, we needed near the well and soon started setting everything up. As I didn't want my identity to be revealed we were basically told we would be doing a test of a new product that had been created to help catch water more easily in the wells. In exchange for testing it here they told us that they would give us one for free, although people were a little skeptical at first. After a while everyone accepted the idea. After all, Bernard said that he would bear the cost if something went wrong and if it worked out it would be much easier to get water. There was really no reason to refuse. We spent some time putting everything together, or rather, Bernard, Henry, and my father were doing the whole process while following my instructions. And soon the manual water pump was assembled and ready to be tested. A crowd of people had shown up before I knew it. Surely everyone was curious about how this invention would work. After we finished putting everything together it was finally time to test it. Although I had indicated how to build it, I was quite nervous. I was not 100% sure if it would work or not. I could only rely on my knowledge that I had accumulated over my 20 years. While I was thinking about this Bernard looked at me. His face indicated that he was waiting for my approval to start the test. As I nodded to Bernard. He looked at my father who was going to do the hand pump test. As Bernard nodded to my father he began to push up and down repeatedly. No sound could be heard as everyone paid attention. My heart was beating rapidly as I waited for the water to begin to fall. I could see on some people's faces that they had already given up hope. But when they least expected it, water began to pour out of the pipe and into the bucket. Everyone began to shout with joy that they would no longer have to pull a rope attached to a bucket full of water anymore. And since it was quite malleable even children could come and get the water. 
Bernard turned to me as he gave me a big thumbs up. My parents quickly hugged me in happiness seeing that what I had created had worked, and this was just the beginning. 5. Chapter 10. Reincarnated Attending a Medieval School. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After the event with the hand water pump some time had passed, I had finally turned eight years old and was ready to go to school. Furthermore, after I completed the water pump as promised Bernard gave the one, we had tested for free to our village. Every month he visited us to deliver my share of the money from the sale of the pumps, apparently. There were many engineers and scholars wanting to know who was the person who had managed to create such an invention, but since I had registered my name as X, they had no idea who had done it. I wonder what their reaction would be when they learned that it was a seven-year-old child who had done it. This is what I was thinking while I was in class. Today would be my first day attending school. I was currently sitting on a chair. There were several children talking to their friends. Obviously I was alone. It's not that I didn't want friends. It was just weird talking to children when mentally I was over 20 years old. In case you are wondering what the classroom is like, it is really simple. Some chairs and tables placed for the students to sit on and a blackboard where the teacher would put the assignments etc. I had already decided before that I would not hold back. I want to graduate from school as soon as possible and go to the capital. Although I like the place where I was born and raised, I feel that there is still much more to see, and I won't be able to see everything if I stay here. I had already talked to my parents about it, and they accepted easily. My sister cried a lot thinking that I would abandon her while I went away alone to a distant place. But since I won't be going now, I managed to take her worries away. Besides, Bernard told me that there is an academy in the capital of the Solaris Kingdom where it would be very beneficial if I went. Although the academy only accepts mostly nobles and it is possible to get in if you get 95% of the questions right and prove that you are able to attend the academy. If I had to sum it up, if you are a commoner, you will only get into the school if you are a genius. My plan is to enter this school when I turn 14. From 14 I will finish school at 18 totaling 4 years in total. As there is a school with dormitories, I will have no problem staying there. Besides, with the money from the sales of the manual water pump I have plenty of money in my pocket. While I was thinking about this the teacher was passing activities on the board for us to do. I'm pretty sure that everything they taught I would already know. Even if it's something new that I only have in this world I finished reading the books in my house when I was 3 years old. What the teacher was going over was a simple summation math account. As soon as she finished putting the exercises on the board for us to do, she gave a brief explanation of how to solve the questions and told us to come to her when we were done. Needless to say, I was the first to finish. As she was putting the questions on the board, I was already answering them. As soon as I finished answering all five questions, she had put on the board I went to her and showed her that I had finished when I approached her. She looked at me with a suspicious look wanting to know the reason for my going to her. I'm sure she didn't expect me to be finished already. What happened Ren? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Asked the teacher with a smile on her face. I'm done. I said as I put my small notebook on the table. The teacher looked incredulous at what I had just said but said nothing and looked at my notebook. Within seconds her eyes went wide and she looked at me right away. I don't think she was surprised that I had managed to do it. I think she was surprised that I had finished seconds after she finished going over the activities on the board. They are right. Has anyone ever taught you that before? The teacher asked. Not really. My parents can barely read. They wouldn't know enough math to be able to teach me either. The teacher seemed to understand what I meant since usually in cities the only ones who would know how to read to teach their children would be the richest or the mayor. The teacher started thinking about something and soon after that she started writing something in my notebook. Here, try to solve these problems. After that she handed me the notebook again. As soon as she handed it to me, I looked at the notebook and saw what she had written in it. There were new math numbers. Although they were a little more difficult than the previous one, they still didn't break the pattern of something I could do in seconds. Without even going back to my chair I took my charcoal pencil and started to solve the problems. The teacher looked at me as if she couldn't believe her eyes. Unfortunately for her I had already decided to graduate from the class as a genius. 
This would also help me in going to the academy. After all most cases of commoners attending the academy was because their previous school indicated them. In moments I had already solved all the problems and again handed over to the teacher. She quickly took the notebook from my hand and began to look to see if the answers were correct. A smile escapes my face to see her reaction. You need much more than this to impress me teacher. The teacher got up from her desk and quickly left the room. I am pretty sure that she went to the principal's office to report what had happened. From that day on I would be called the rising genius of the small town of Maine. 7. Chapter 11. Goal for the Future If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After that I basically had to do several tests with the teachers to see how much I already knew so they could put me in a more advanced class. And in the end, it was decided that I would skip to the last year. Now just try to imagine the bizarre scene of an 8-year-old child in the middle of teenagers. That was exactly the scene that was happening. Only I was the child in the middle of the teenagers. The stairs are making me uncomfortable. That's what was going through my mind. No matter where I looked someone was looking at me. I wonder if I did wrong in showing that I have more intelligence than the common children. But still I don't regret it. There are many things I want to do so the sooner I graduate here the better it will be. Besides, if I show that I am smarter than most maybe I will get a scholarship at the academy. While I was thinking about this the door was opened and soon a professor entered. The woman already seemed to be of a significantly advanced age. Her gray hair was well done and her glasses were giving her an intellectual appearance. I learned that the last year of the schools in the kingdom are taught by trained noblemen who have volunteered. At least that's what they say. To me they are simply trying to find talent among the commoners. As soon as the teacher came to the table she sat down and started to look around. It seemed that she was looking for something or someone. As soon as our eyes met, she stood up again and walked to the front of the room. As you know today, we have a new student who is with us attending our classes. Although he is eight years younger than you, I ask you to respect him accordingly. He was placed in our class after several tests that proved that he was able to learn the same subjects as you. After she said this, she walked to her desk and sat down. Again several looks were being directed at me. I felt like in a circus performance, but decided not to pay attention. After that the day passed smoothly, in general the classes were still simple so I was able to do everything easily. When evening came, I was already home having dinner with my family. So Rin, how are the classes going? My mom asked. It's going well mom, it's not that hard, I'll be able to keep up. At my words my mother let out a sigh and looked at me with a worried look on her face. I wonder who you pulled, suddenly jumping into the senior year within a week of entering the school. As my mother said this, she looked at me with a look that clearly said I was a problem boy. Sorry about that mom, I will definitely give you more trouble in the future. But what's wrong with that Layla? It just proves even more that our son is a genius, said my father with a huge smile on his face as he put his hand on my head and shook my hair. Hearing my father's words my mother looked at him with angry eyes as if she couldn't believe what she was hearing. And because you always spoil him that he doesn't know that the things he does are totally out of the norm. My mother said to my father making him cringe, I'm sorry mom, I actually know that what I'm doing is out of the ordinary. But if I can do something to improve the lives of the people who live in this world, I have no reason not to. I also want to be smart like Oni Aichan. While my father and mother were talking Anna suddenly said this while raising her arms. The smile on her face made it impossible to deny any of her requests. But what are you saying Anna? If you become just like your brother, I don't doubt at all that you two really could do something totally crazy. Hearing my mother's words made me wonder what kind of person she thought I was in her mind. I mean, it's not like I'm going to create a nuclear bomb, unless I have to. What do you think I could create my dear mother? My tone was playful. My mom looked at my dad and her eyes were clearly saying something like, Did you see? He is only like this because of you. I laughed as I looked at my father who was trying to apologize to my mother while his head was on the ground in a perfect size. Sometimes I wonder if my father doesn't have the soul of a Japanese. Seeing that I was laughing my father lifts his head and soon he, my mother, and Anna start laughing together. Moments like this could not be replaced by any invention I could create so they were the most precious to me. 
A few days had passed. My school life was still quiet as I continued to stand out more and more. Now instead of only the school knowing about me, now it seems that the whole town knows about my academic abilities. At this point the teachers simply stopped trying to understand me. And anything I said or did they would simply say was because I was a genius. But this honestly didn't matter to me. The sales of my manual water pump were doing very well and I was making a lot of money. Thanks to this my family and I had managed to move to a slightly richer area of the city. But otherwise my goal was still the same. Probably in two years I would be able to graduate. And if all goes well... I would get a letter of recommendation indicating me for the academy in the capital of Solaris. 8. Chapter 12. Toward the Capital of Solaris. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. At the end of the year the school vacations were extremely close. As usual I was getting top marks in all the tests they had. This was extremely important as it was directly linked to my scholarship to enter the academy. Earlier Bernard had come to my house to discuss what would be good for the end of the year. He knew that my vacation was near and as I would be two months away. He thought it would be the perfect time to visit the capital of Solaris. As soon as I heard this, I was extremely excited. I had always been curious about the capital. And now finally it would be time for me to go and visit it. But of course we wouldn't just be going for a walk. Bernard plans to introduce me to the leader of the Merchant's Guild. This will also be extremely beneficial for me in the future. I had already talked to my parents about going to the capital. At first, they were a little afraid. But after Bernard said he would take good care of me they gave in. Is something wrong, Run? Bernard asked me as he prepared to climb into his wagon. He and I were at the city gate getting ready to leave. As I look back a feeling of loneliness hits me. I know I won't be gone long but when I join the academy, I will be living in the academy dorms so it gives me a strange feeling. It's nothing. As soon as I said that I walked over to where Bernard was and climbed into his wagon, Bernard looked at me for a few seconds but in the end said nothing. Alright then let's go. As soon as he said that the lizard started walking as he pulled the carriage, being honest and a little faster than I expected but still manages to be much slower than modern cars if we use cars or motorcycles. I think we could reach the capital in less than a day. While this thought was going through my head another doubt arises. Since in this world there were no monsters this means there is no point in having adventurers. But it is about the bandits. Bernard, what is the risk of us being robbed while on the road? As soon as I said that Bernard looked at me and then immediately seemed to realize something. That reminds me, this is your first time out of town, right? I nodded my head in agreement with what Bernard said. Well, this road is usually pretty safe so the risk of being robbed is low. But at certain stops there are posts like this one with guards who watch the roads. Bernard said while pointing to something that was a little further ahead. As we approached it became quite visible what it was. It was a little house made of wood with an open window in front. It was painted in the colors white and blue as we passed. I noticed that there was a man sitting inside the house with a blue suit. Being honest it looked a little like a military uniform. After this we continued on the road for hours. The landscape changed from urban to huge forests. Untouched by human hands the place looked like something taken from a painting. All right, let's rest tonight. Tomorrow morning we continue. We will arrive in the capital by nightfall. Said Bernard entering with his wagon in a small stream. After leaving the wagon Bernard walked to the lizard and began to pet the animal. After that we put up our tents and soon started to prepare lunch. Apparently these lizards can stay up to a week without eating anything as long as they drink enough water. I guess that explains why they seem to prefer to use lizards than horses for long trips. The only exceptions are royalty horses. They are basically bred to hold up even longer than lizards. Bernard said realizing that I had taken an interest in the subject. By the way who is the leader of the merchant's guild? Hearing my question Bernard gives a strange smile and answers me. Well I don't think you would know. In fact I am sure that very few people know so what I am about to tell you can't tell anyone. Swallowing hard I wonder why he has suddenly become so serious. Just for future reference, what would happen if I told someone? Well, I wouldn't find it strange if you suddenly disappeared. I was totally incredulous at what Bernard said. He's basically saying that I'm going to be killed, isn't he? 
This escalated much further than I had imagined it would. I know why you're so surprised but it's quite understandable. You see, she's the younger sister of the King of Solaris. At Bernard's response my brain simply seizes up. What is this man doing telling me such an important secret as if he were telling it to a friend in a bar? Hmm, that's true. I don't know why I said that to a child. I guess I can't see you as a child anymore so I'm talking as if I were talking to any other friend. After this bomb Bernard abruptly dropped on me. We put out the fire and went to sleep. Unfortunately there are no sleeping bags in this world so clearly it was not very comfortable sleeping on the floor with nothing but a cloth. The next day we were ready to leave. We would arrive in the capital by nightfall so we took the road very early. This also raised another question. In this world there are no clocks so how did Bernard know what time it was? This was answered shortly afterwards. We look at the position of the sun. But unfortunately sometimes when it rains it is impossible to know the time exactly. So it delays a lot of things. With what Bernard said a new idea whistled in my head. If in this world there are no clocks then just create one. With a new idea in mind. At night we arrived in the royal capital. A huge line was in front of us of several wagons that had the same destination as ours. 7. Chapter 13. Getting to know the leader of the merchant's guild. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Bernard and I stood in line for a considerable time. As soon as it was finally our turn to enter Bernard gave the guards something. I thought were documents. Another guard went to look at what was inside our cart but soon returned giving a nod to his co-workers. I think that's the signal to say that everything is fine. Soon our wagon began to move again. As we passed through the gate, I felt that a new world had opened up to me, a long street that went as far as the eye could see. Several stores and houses could be seen. In the distance a huge castle could be seen while a flag with a drawing of the sun waved frantically. So, what about everything you expected? Bernard asked me seeing how I looked everywhere, to tell the truth and even better than I imagined and as if I were inside an anime. There were people in all directions buying things or walking with their families. This seemed to be an extremely well cared for kingdom. Yes, I can see the happiness on people's faces. I replied to Bernard as a smile hovered on my face. I figured you would say that. Although we are not the best country in terms of military, the king and queen of the kingdom of Solaris are extremely careful with their citizens. As I have been to the other kingdoms, I can say that those smiles you only see here, said Bernard in an enthusiastic tone. It was possible to see on his face how much he liked this kingdom. Anyway, the merchant's guild is a little further ahead, said Bernard as he pointed to an establishment further on. As soon as we got to the place, we got off the wagon and went towards the door. As soon as Bernard opened the door the reception desk was visible. As I must say it looks a bit like the ones in my other world. A counter with an attendant and a couch to wait for you to be called, as I looked around. I didn't notice Bernard walking in front of me and going up to the woman behind the counter. As soon as the woman saw Bernard, she made a rather polite reference. Bernard San, and a pleasure to see you again. I believe you have come to take care of that matter? That's right. Can you let the guild leader know that I have arrived? But of course, I'll be back in a moment. As soon as the woman said that she came out from behind the counter, and went to the stairs going up to the second floor. Bernard came back to me and sat down next to me. Are you and someone important? As soon as I asked that Bernard seemed to think about what to say and soon opened his mouth. I wouldn't say that, but it is true that I am a fairly well-known merchant. I do business in almost every kingdom, and possible to say I have a certain reputation. I admit that this took me a bit by surprise, who would have thought that the guy who visits my small town once a week would be someone so important? I know what you are thinking, but it's nothing so complicated. Normally I would leave it to my subordinates, but since I really like this kingdom, I prefer to do business here myself. While Bernard and I were talking it was possible to hear the sound of creaking wood. I immediately realized that someone was coming down the stairs. Exactly as I predicted the woman who was attending to us seconds ago appeared on the stairs as she approached us. She said you can come up. She was in a meeting but the meeting just ended, said the woman while having a smile on her face. All right, thank you Morel. Let's go up Rin. 
Following Bernard's words, I got up from the couch and walked along with him and Morel to the stairs. As soon as we climbed the stairs, we stopped in a hallway with some doors. We kept walking until we reached the last door. Miss Aria, I have brought them. As soon as Morel said those words, a voice echoed from inside the room. Let them in. As soon as the voice from inside said this, Morel opened the door and gave us room to pass. As soon as we entered, I was a little impressed that the room looked exactly as I had thought it would. A large window lit up the place. There was a table with a chair in front of the window. Two couches were each on the side of a table that was right in the middle of the room. Thank you, Morel. Bring us something to drink, please. As soon as the woman said that, Morel turned around and started walking towards the second floor. Sit down, you two. As soon as the woman said that, Bernard and I sat down as we waited for the conversation to begin. I thank you for coming all the way up here. As to one here who doesn't know me, I will introduce myself. My name is Aria and I am the leader of the Merchant's Guild. And a pleasure to meet you. As soon as Aria said this, she stared at me for a few seconds before speaking. Since Bernard said he would bring our mysterious friend X, and you came along with him, I assume you are the inventor of the hand water pump, am I right? Yes, and a pleasure to meet you, my name is Rin. As soon as I said that the woman kept looking at me for a few seconds, I felt that all my secrets were being unveiled in front of Arya even though I didn't say a single word. But this is really impressive. Bernard told me that I would be surprised when I met him. But this is way beyond my expectations. How old are you? I'm eight, ma'am. As soon as I said that Arya widened her eyes and looked at Bernard, I felt that her eyes were asking for some explanation. Unfortunately, there is nothing I can say about that. He is just too genius. I have stopped trying to understand him. Bernard said while he had a defeated smile on his face. But seriously, I wonder what they think I am in their eyes. 7. Chapter 14. Meeting Not Intended. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Anyway, let's get back to the main subject, Arya said resuming the conversation. As Bernard must have already told you I wanted to talk to you. And true I was surprised to hear that X was someone so young but you don't have to worry. As long as I earn profits, I don't care about age or gender. With Arya's words I could understand a little bit how she was as a person. As long as she makes profits, she won't judge anything or anyone. Being honest I was happy with that. If she was some hard to deal with my next ideas might not go so well. While thinking about this Arya continued talking. Also, I have a proposition for you, said Arya taking a piece of paper from her desk and handing it to me. What is it? As soon as I asked this Arya cracked a smile on her face. And a contract for exclusivity of your next inventions or research. Basically, I am sponsoring you, said Arya with a smile on her face. But even though she is smiling I felt that there was something wrong. As soon as I looked at Bernard the same one was looking at me. There was definitely something wrong with that situation. While I was thinking that there was something wrong with the situation the door was opened and Morel entered bringing a tray with teas. As soon as she put the tray on the table she turned and left again. Without wasting any time, I took the contract in my hand and started to read. After a few seconds reading something caught my attention. There was a disguise clause. That although it wouldn't affect me immediately it would certainly affect me in the long term. I had an idea of what might be going on so I continued reading the contract for a few more seconds. After I finished reading, I put the contract on the table and looked at Arya. I can't sign this contract. As soon as I said that Arya's eyes narrowed while Bernard's eyes eased up. May I know why? Arya asked with a smile on her face. This contract has a clause in it that while it wouldn't affect me now it would certainly be detrimental in the long run. Besides, this contract lasts over five years. My future research would clearly be less favorable to me and more favorable to you. As soon as I said that Arya's eyes widened and a huge smile appeared on her face. See, I told you there was no point in testing him, Bernard said, as I imagined the two of them were testing me. Ha ha ha, I'm sorry about that Rin, it's just that I wanted to see how far your wit and intelligence goes, and I must admit, you are even better than I expected. As soon as Arya said this, she took another piece of paper from her desk and handed it to me. This is the real contract, you can read it if you like, Arya said with a smile on her face. 
but unlike the previous time I felt that this time she was being sincere, besides, if we are to work together trust will be the most important part of our relationship, no, I will trust you, besides I trust Bernard, my words made Bernard give me a smile, I soon started to sign the paper and as soon as I finished, I gave it back to Arya, with that we closed the deal, it will be a pleasure to work with you Ren, I expect great things from you, said Arya as she sipped some of her tea. I promise I won't let you down, by the way, there is something else I was thinking of creating, something that will make it easier for us to know the time. It's quite inconvenient to depend on the sun to know the time, and as they say, time and money. As soon as I said this Arya and Bernard looked at each other for a few seconds before turning to me. What do you have in mind? With Bernard's question a smile made itself present on my face. I'm glad you asked. I said as I took out a large piece of paper and placed it on the table. Arya and Bernard stood up and started looking at the paper. On the paper was the diagram of an old clock from my old world. Although I want to make a digital one there is still no electricity for that so I will go for the old ones. But although Bernard and Arya were looking at the diagram their expressions were getting even more confused as time went on. I think I can understand the concept. But how exactly would this work in practice? Bernard asked. It works by unwinding a spring. The spring is initially wound through a mechanism that involves cogwheels and a string. The wound spring will store an energy that will continuously drive the mechanism and this will allow us to tell time. Listening to my explanations both Bernard and Arya look at each other for a few minutes before sighing. As usual, I can't understand anything you are saying, Bernard said with a defeated smile on his face. Anyway, if this works will it allow us to know the time accurately? Arya asked, I just shook my head as a smile appeared on my face. It will work. After the deal was closed and a new business idea was created, we left the merchant's guild. As soon as we left there was a crowd of people in front of us. It looked like they were waiting for something to come through. I wonder what's going on. I asked as I tried to look at what was on the other side. Bernard seemed to think for a few seconds and soon it seems he had an idea as to why there was such a crowd. I just forgot, the king and the third princess were at a continental meeting in the kingdom of Storn. Today would be the day they would return, Bernard said. As I was taking in what he had just said a carriage started to pass in front of us. It was all white and had a drawing of a sun on its door. As soon as I could see who was inside my brain simply locked up. That was the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. She had beautiful snow white hair. Her eyes were golden and could easily be mistaken for the sun. As I looked at her, I felt a fluttering in my chest, but that feeling was strangely comfortable and warm. At that moment I realized, I had fallen in love at first sight. 7. Chapter 15. The Third Princess. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. The Third Princess of the Solaris Kingdom. Emmy Tulipal Solaris, since she was young has always been hailed as one of the most beautiful people on the continent. And as she grew older this was even more confirmed. And now at the age of eight she is truly considered the most beautiful woman in all of the Marban continent. Her beautiful white hair together with her beautiful golden eyes that look like a reflection of the sun, she can truly be called the reincarnation of the goddess. And thanks to these characteristics Emmy is used to receiving marriage proposals from many different kingdoms. One of the kingdoms that actively tries to ask for Emmy's hand is the Kingdom of Storm. The crown prince of the Kingdom of Storm truly felt a desire for possession when he first saw Emmy when they were both four years old. Since then the Kingdom of Storm has been trying its best to marry Emmy to the crown prince. But unfortunately, the crown prince of the Storm Kingdom is a scoundrel who sees women only as an object. From an early age the Prince of the Storm Kingdom got all the women he wanted. So when he saw Emmy, he thought it would be the same. Unfortunately for him the other party was a princess from another kingdom. So he knew he couldn't get Emmy any other way than with a marriage. But luck seemed to be on the Crown Prince's side this time. Emmy was from a neighboring kingdom inferior to the Kingdom of Storm. He was sure that if he pressured the Kingdom of Solaris with threats of war the king would give in. And in yet another of these attempts Emmy was along with her father in a carriage returning to the castle. The street was crowded with people trying any way they could to get a glimpse of Emmy. What happened daughter? A voice came from the person sitting in front of me. 
My father Cedric Tulipal Solaris, he has golden hair and eyes. His appearance and relatively young for someone who has four children, my father and the second person I trust the most after my mother. It's nothing dad, and it's just. I'm a little tired of it, because of my appearance everyone treats me differently. I said as I sighed, I know it sounds like an understatement but I'm an extremely pretty girl. There's no way I wouldn't have known when since I was a kid I was praised for my looks, even if I struggled in my studies and other things. In the end my looks will always be the most important point. The icing on the cake was the prince of the kingdom of Storm. I had heard what kind of person he was. No way I want to marry someone like him. But I am a princess. Besides, Storm was a much stronger kingdom militarily than Solaris. If they went to war the chance of our kingdom losing would be great. While these thoughts were infesting my mind, the carriage kept moving towards the castle. As soon as we arrived at the castle my father extended his hand helping me to get off the carriage. A group of servants were waiting for us at the entrance. My father went directly to his personal office while I was guided by the maids to my room. How is my mother? I asked one of the maids who was guiding me. Her majesty is still in bed, however, this morning she was able to go to the garden. Said the maid who kept walking in front of me, with the words of the maid a relief arises in my chest. About a month from now my mother suddenly became ill. All kinds of doctors were called but none of them could cure my mother's illness. Now all they say is that she is near her end. They are not even trying harder to cure her. My mother is one of the most important people to me. She was one of the only people who didn't compliment me on my looks. She really complimented me on what Emmy could do. I'm very grateful to her for that. If someone can save my mother, even if it's just because of my looks, I wouldn't mind getting engaged to that person. As soon as we got to the door of my room it was opened by one of the servants, as she gave me space to enter. My room is relatively pink with white details. There was a window that faces the city. Beside the window there is a door that is connected with the balcony. The scenery is really fantastic, whenever I have a lot of thoughts. I come here to take a breath. Looking at the stars I see an extremely beautiful sky, several white dots shining in this immense darkness. While I'm on the balcony two knocks on the door snap me out of my daze since someone came here at this hour. I'm sure it's time for dinner. With this thought in mind I go to the door and open it. As I expected there was a maid waiting outside. Dinner is ready your highness. Alright, let's go. With that said we started walking to the banquet hall. After walking for a while we came to a huge door. There were two maids in front of the door waiting for me to approach to open it. As I approached the door the two maids began to open it. As soon as the door was opened a luxurious dining room was in front of me. A long table with various foods was present on the table. Sitting at the table were my father. My two brothers and my sister. In addition, my mother was also sitting. She looked at me with a smile on her face while waving her hand. I can see from her face that she is not entirely well. But it is already a relief to know that she can at least get out of bed. 7. Chapter 16. Hope. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. As soon as I entered the dining room I walked softly to where a maid was waiting to help me sit. As soon as I approached, she gently pulled the chair back. Following her cue I sat down gently in the chair. As soon as I sat down, I looked at my mother again. She had a soft smile on her face, she was always that kind of person. A very gentle and kind queen, she constantly attended orphanages and donated quite a bit of money to those places. Are you feeling better mom? As soon as I asked this my mother looked at me and gently wiped her mouth with a handkerchief before answering me. Yes I'm feeling much better, I'm sorry for worrying you. No, you don't need to apologize mom, I am happy to hear that you are feeling better. I said to my mother with a smile on my face. After that we continued eating in silence. No one seemed to have anything to say so dinner went silent for a while. Suddenly while we were eating the door was opened again and a man dressed as a butler entered going towards my father. After approaching my father, the man put his mouth near his ear and said something to my father. After a few seconds my father nodded to the butler and then the butler left again. Apart from my mother everyone in the room was confused by what had just happened. While we were thinking about what could be happening the door was opened again. 
who came through the door was a person we hadn't seen for some time, my Aunt Arisa. She entered the room sporting her blonde hair along with her blonde eyes, features that remind me a lot of my father's, if I had to describe her. I would say that she is quite eccentric. From what my father told me she herself decided to give up her place in the succession to the throne simply because she said it would be a pain to command a kingdom. Although many have seen this as disrespectful, I have always admired this side of her. She is not afraid to speak her mind. And to prove it she created the Merchants Guild which to this day helps the kingdom of Solaris immensely financially. As soon as she walked through the door, she walked over to one of the vacant chairs that stood next to my father, facing my mother. And it was a pleasure to see you after so long, sister. The children were missing you. Couldn't you visit us more often? Said my father as he looked with an accusing look at my Aunt Aria. The same one simply put her hand on the back of her head and started apologizing. Ha ha ha, sorry about that. These days I've been busy with guild stuff. Besides, today I met the creator behind the manual water pump. Said my aunt with a smile. I had already heard about this person. But unfortunately everything about him is a mystery. All we know is his pseudonym which is X. Other than that we don't know his age, where he lives, and much less where he is currently. So when we heard that the aunt met him, we were really excited about the subject. So you have met him. Is there anything you can tell us about him? My dad said. I was just about to get to that part. At first I couldn't tell you much about him. But today when he left, he suddenly came back and said I could tell you some things about him. Saying this my aunt took a piece of paper and put it on the table. This is his new project that was presented today. As soon as she said this my father took the paper and started to look at it. Within seconds his expression changed from dull to surprised and then to amazed. This, are you sure it will work? My father asked. He said it would, said my aunt with a smile. If it really works many things will be affected, this person, and truly a genius. At my father's words we all became curious about what was on the paper. Soon after my father passed the paper to my mother who also seemed interested. My mother's expressions were the same as my father's. Oh man, that's certainly something interesting. After that the paper was passed to my two brothers and then to my sister to finally reach me. When the paper finally arrived, I was blown away by what I was seeing. A device capable of telling the exact time, this would certainly be something that would change our daily lives. Each time I looked at what was on the paper the more interested I became in this person. He said that his current goal would be to join the Solaris Academy. He said he had another goal in mind but since he couldn't accomplish it so easily, he left it at that. As soon as my aunt said this everyone including me was confused about one thing in particular. The first to try to remove that doubt was my father. If he still intends to enter the academy, then how old is he? Hearing my father's words my aunt put a smile on her face. He is the same age as Emmy. With her words the whole place was silent for a few seconds, which was soon interrupted by surprised voices. Are you sure about this Arya? Asked my father not believing what he was hearing. Absolutely sure, I saw him in the flesh. Besides, he seems to have been born on the same day and time as Emmy. Said my aunt as she looked at me making everyone look at me as well. Also, he seems to know things from various fields including medicine. But even though he has the knowledge he said he wouldn't be able to do surgery or anything like that. Listening to my aunt my head started to work a thousand things. Several things were going through my mind. If it is him, maybe he can help my mother. All my thoughts were going in this direction. I needed to meet this person. 6. Chapter 17. Unsophisticated Breakfast. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After my visit to the Merchants Guild a day passed. As I was going to stay a week in the capital Bernard helped me with the inn. After waking up early in the morning I went down the stairs of the inn going to the second floor. I sat at one of the tables and soon after a little girl came to my table. Good morning Oniai-chan, I'll bring your breakfast, said the little girl with a beautiful smile on her face going towards the kitchen right away. Who just spoke was the daughter of the owners of the inn I am in. They are longtime friends of Bernard so he recommended me to this place. While I was thinking about it some people at the next table were talking. By the way, I went to the Merchants Guild yesterday and heard that they were with someone super important in the boss's office. 
They wouldn't let anyone in, said a man as he took a beer. I heard about that too. Do you think it could be him? One of the friends asked. Him? Yes, the one with the X, or whatever they call him. There is no mention of his real name, but they are saying that he is a genius who appears every 100 years. I heard from some friends that Bernard was going to bring someone to the capital yesterday, and since Bernard is the only one who knows who the X I think it matches with this other person coming. Listening to the conversation of these men a drop drops down my forehead, the reason I hid my name was simply because I know it would be risky for now. I don't want to be hired or bothered by organizations and corporations, but I know that one day it will be inevitable that they will end up discovering my true identity. After a while the little girl came back with my breakfast, since she was bringing too much stuff at once I decided to go to her and help him. All right Oniai-chan, here is your breakfast, said the girl with a smile. I returned her smile and soon she went back to the kitchen aiming to serve the other customers. Looking at my table my breakfast consists basically of a juice, but I really don't know what this juice is, not to mention that it's not really tasty. It's quite inferior to what I used to drink in my past life. Apart from that there is a soup and a bread. The soup is quite boring because it has no spices and the bread is relatively hard. Mixing my bread into the soup I begin to eat my breakfast while continuing to listen to what the men were saying. But apart from what they had said there was nothing else of interest that I could hear so basically as soon as I finished my breakfast I set off for Henry's workshop. I had already told Bernard the day before that I would go to Henry's workshop to make the first prototype of the watch. Plus I decided to make a last minute wrist version. But if it was Henry, I am sure he would accept with a smile on his face. He seems to be the kind of guy who likes to do new things after all. As I walked down the street, I observed the various stores present. Just for the record the ground has no sidewalk and is basically dirt. While thinking about this I came to a certain store. Looking at the map in my hand I checked again to see if I was in the wrong place. Bernard said that as soon as I left the inn, I would find Bernard's store 13 stores later. I guess I am in the right place. Thinking about it I decide to enter the store. As soon as I enter the store, I see that it is a relatively simple store. I approach the counter and ring the bell that was there to indicate that someone had entered the store. After a few seconds a man comes out from the back of the store and soon spots me. Oh, it was you kid. Bernard told me you were coming today because he wanted to talk to me about something but I didn't think you would be here so soon, Henry said leaning against the counter. Oh yes, and that as soon as I finished breakfast I decided to come here. I have a new project and I would like you to help me. As soon as I said that Henry's eyes took on a sparkle and a smile made its way across his face. Interesting, let's talk in my workshop. With that Henry and I entered his workshop and started to talk about the clock. As soon as I showed Henry the design and tried to explain how it works. He was skeptical at first but after I told him I had made the manual water pump the same way he soon gave in. But seriously where do you get these ideas from? Henry said looking at me. Even if you asked me that. I just decided to create it so I started thinking about how to do it. I wasn't really lying. First I decided to create then later I scoured my memory looking for the manufacturing method I read in some books. Besides I also made this other wristwatch design. This is a smaller version that allows the person to see the time anywhere. After all, the original watch is designed for specific environments. So I decided to make one that you can carry. It works the same way as the other one. After hearing me Henry sighed before looking at me as if looking at something unbelievable. There you go again making modifications like it's something easy. You have no idea that these things you are asking me to do are extremely difficult to do, don't you? You don't think you can do it? Hearing my answer Henry simply snorted before a smile made itself present on his face. Who do you think I am kid? Come back here in three days and you will have that clock of yours working perfectly, Henry said with a smug smile on his face. 7. Chapter 18. The Order. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After my conversation with Henry a day had passed, I was currently at my inn having breakfast. This really made me realize that I urgently need to invent spices for food and teach them how to make a softer bread. While I was thinking about this the door was opened followed by the sound of footsteps. 
As soon as I looked towards the footsteps, I saw Bernard coming towards me. As soon as he approached, he pulled up a chair and sat down facing me. Good morning, Ren, Bernard said with. Good morning, Bernard. Do you need me for anything? Immediately I realized that he was looking for me for two simple reasons, the first, and that he is not staying at this and like me. Bernard apparently has a house in the capital. Second, and that his face is practically saying that he came here looking for me. So, you noticed, smart as usual. Bernard sighed. Your face says a lot. After my words Bernard's face became a little more serious causing me to straighten up in the chair. At that time I realized that he was looking for me for a serious matter. Anyway, today I came for a specific reason. Arya wants to see you. I don't know the details but it looks like something related to the royal family. As soon as he said that my head started thinking of various reasons why the royal family wants to see me. But the only one that was plausible in my situation was that after seeing what I am capable of they want me to do something for them. But I have no idea what that something would be. Alright, I will go see her after I finish my breakfast. Hearing my words Bernard nods and raises his hand causing the little girl to come to our table. Can I help you lad? I would like to order my breakfast. Sure, I'll be back in a moment. After saying that the little girl ran towards the kitchen to get Bernard's food. After that Bernard and I chatted about random things and the watches I am trying to create. How is the prototype making going? Henry told me it would be ready tomorrow. But it is probably going well. The watch doesn't have such a complicated mechanism to begin with. After hearing my words, I noticed that Bernard was looking at me as if he was seeing an incomprehensible being in front of him. What happened? After my question Bernard sighed before answering. Geniuses are really monstrous. Was that an insult? Hearing my answer Bernard gave a smile. I am sure he is finding this situation amusing. It was a compliment, and of course. After our little conversation the girl arrived bringing Bernard's breakfast. His breakfast was not very different from mine. To tell you the truth this world has almost no variations in what you eat. And quite normal you eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch and dinner. With the only difference being whether or not you will eat with meat. Bernard started to eat his food and I was really impressed that he was eating it without even blinking. After we finished eating breakfast, we left the inn and started walking towards the merchant's guild. My inn is not that far from the guild. In seven minutes walking you can reach the guild. With this thought in mind, we arrived at the merchant's guild. As soon as we opened the door, we saw Morel at the counter. As soon as she saw us, she opened a smile and waved to us. Good morning Morel. We came here at Arya's request, I said as soon as I approached the counter. Oh yes, Arya told me that when you arrived, she to let you up, she is in her office. Thank you. As soon as I said that I walked toward the stairs leading to the second floor but noticed that Bernard was not following me. Aren't you coming? Arya told me she would talk to you alone. As this time it seems to be something private and best, I stay out of it. Bernard said walking to the door of the guild. I will visit Henry to see how the project is going. See you later. After those words Bernard walked away leaving only me, Morel, and a few other merchants at the entrance who were being attended to by other girls. All right Ren, I will take you to Arya, said Morel as she walked in front of me. After that I followed Morel to the second floor and soon we were in front of Arya's office door. Arya, Ren has arrived, said Morel after knocking twice on the door. After that a voice came from inside. You may enter. After that Morel opened the door and gave me room to enter. Please run. Without wasting any time, I entered the room and heard it being closed just behind me. Arya was sitting on her chair while looking at me. I thank you for coming even though you were called so suddenly. You don't have to worry about that Arya. It must be something serious to need to call me so urgently, isn't it? As soon as I said that Arya cracked a smile and pointed to the chair that was in front of her desk. Have a seat. As soon as she said it, I sat down in the chair and waited for her to continue the conversation. Okay, before we start there is something, I want to ask you. Alright, go ahead. Do you have any knowledge in medicine? I was a little surprised by Aria's question. And true I have some knowledge of medicine that I acquired on earth including about making medicines. I don't know if all the plants that existed in my past life exist here but I noticed that a good part of them do, besides. Bernard had told me that the subject was about the royal family. 
So the only reason I can think of for her to ask me this is that someone in the royal family is sick and they are unable to identify the cause or find a cure. In this case I have no reason to lie. If I can help, I will gladly help. Besides, if it is someone from that person's family, I want to help them even a little. Yes, I do, but I don't know if it will be enough. As soon as I answered that area's eyes sparkled in relief, I guess my hunch was right. That's great to hear. After saying this Arya takes on a serious expression on her face looking at me immediately afterwards. Ren I have a request for you. 6. Chapter 19. The Content of the Order. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. I remain silent waiting for Arya to continue the conversation. There is someone in my family who is ill. To be more precise my sister-in-law is. As I knew she was the younger sister of the king I assumed that it was the wife of the king she was talking about. This made my heart hurt a little. After all, the person who is sick is the mother of that person. We have already sent the best doctors in our kingdom to try to cure her. Unfortunately they have not been able to find the cause of the illness much less a cure. To tell you the truth I don't expect much from you either. As you know science is very different from medicine. Arya said, as soon as she said this my head began to formulate various types of diseases. Something I also noticed in the years I was here was that there were several diseases that existed on earth. In the same way there were also several plants that did not exist on earth making it possible to cure diseases that in my world were considered incurable. But this is only in theory, I never really tested it to see if it would work or not. After feeling decided again I look at Arya who was looking at me. There was no reason to hesitate, even if there isn't a cure right away, I know I can create one, at least I think so. I understand, if my knowledge allows, I would love to help. As soon as I said that Arya smiled and looked at me. Sometimes when I am talking to you, I forget that you are only 8 years old. As soon as she said that Arya seemed to have remembered something. By the way, I understand that you were born at the same date and time as my niece. As soon as she said this, I was a little surprised that she would bring up this subject out of the blue, besides I knew well who she was talking about. Although I don't like it very much, I am a little happy about the situation since this way I got to see that person again. Are you talking about the second princess? As soon as I said that she was a little surprised but seems to have accepted that easily. So you knew. I nodded in agreement with what she had said. Speaking of which, the day I first met you was also the day my brother was coming back from the Assembly of Kingdoms or something. Did you get to see them? As soon as she asked me this the memory of the princess flooded my mind. Her unprecedented beauty. Her long platinum hair reminiscent of the moon. Her golden eyes lighting up like the sun. I felt my cheeks warm up. Arya seemed to have noticed this too. Her face was taken over by a smile that said she knew exactly what I was thinking. Ha ha ha. It seems that even geniuses don't escape love. I was a little confused by her use of soft-spokenness. I thought she would yell at me or something for being in love with her niece again. Reading my mind Arya said something I didn't expect. I think I know what you're thinking. And normally that's how it would be. But this time it's a little different. I recognize you as a good match. You have an extremely promising future ahead of you. But whether or not you get what you want is up to you but I will support you in any way I can. I was again puzzled by her motive, but it only took one look into her eyes to know Arya's real motive. Not that she was lying but let's just say it was 50 to 50. In Arya's eyes I could see money symbols. For some reason it seemed that at this very moment she was doing an astronomical calculation in her head. Realizing that I was looking at her Arya quickly pulls herself together and continues our conversation. Anyway, the sooner you go the better. But I still need to make preparations. Is it okay for you to go tomorrow morning? I nodded in agreement with Arya's proposal. Sure, that's fine with me. As soon as I said that Arya smiled again. Great. After that I walked down the stairs and went to the second floor of the merchant's guild. Morel was at the counter as usual. I waved to her being met with a nod back and walked out of the merchant's guild. I started walking again towards the inn. I needed to rest for tomorrow since it would be an important day. But first I needed to go to Henry to tell him that I probably wouldn't be back until the evening tomorrow. Of course, I also wanted to see how the clocks were doing. 
While thinking about this I continued walking through the streets of Solaris. This country was quite cold at night but as I am a person who likes cold, I felt more comfortable than the other way around. While thinking about this before I knew it, I was in front of Henry's store. I entered it and rang the bell again. After a few seconds of silence Henry appeared again. Next to him was Bernard. I didn't really expect him to be next to Henry until this time but this was a great opportunity since I wanted to talk to him too. Rin, Bernard said as soon as he saw me. Good evening, Bernard Henry. I just came here to say that I will be a little busy tomorrow so you probably won't see me until the evening. Oh, if that was it then fine. Henry should finish tomorrow night the prototype of the clock. It would be nice if you came over so we could test it out. Bernard said, I looked at Henry and he nodded his head. All right, I'll be here tomorrow. As soon as I said that I said goodbye to both of them and went back to the inn. As soon as I got in, I headed to my room and collapsed on the bed. Tomorrow would be a truly full day. Plus I would get to see her again. I smacked my cheeks remembering the reason I went to the castle. I need to cure the queen anyway. With this determination slowly the dream took over me and soon I was in dreamland. 7. Chapter 20. Visit to the castle. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. The next day as soon as I woke up, I went to the second floor of the inn and took my breakfast. My goal today would go to the castle with Arya and try to find out what the disease of the queen and try to cure it. I do not know if I will succeed but even so I will do everything in my power. After eating my breakfast I left the inn and walked towards the merchant's guild. The streets were quite crowded, several people doing their daily chores or were going to work. As soon as I arrived at the merchant's guild, I noticed the carriage stopped, probably the one that would take us to the castle. But seriously, looking at the carriages really makes me feel that I should develop cars. But even if I want it will not be so easy. Even if I have memories of how to make one that does not mean I will get it first time. It may take a few months or even years to complete it. With this in mind I entered the merchant's guild and was soon greeted by Murrell. Probably Arisa had already told her to be notified of my arrival. I sat down on a bench and waited for Arisa to come to meet me. A few minutes later Murrell came down the stairs being followed by Arisa. It's good to see you Rin. I was waiting for you to arrive. Arisa said as soon as she approached. I say the same. Is everything ready for us to go? Of course. Our carriage is already waiting for us. After that we left the merchant's guild and got into the carriage. Inside it was relatively spacious. Although I can't say the same about it being comfortable. Within seconds the carriage began to move heading towards the castle. Each time we got closer the more anxious I became. Mainly due to the fact that I didn't know if I could help with anything. Are you nervous? Perhaps noticing my nervousness Arisa asked me while having an understandable smile on her face. A little bit. I said with an awkward smile on my face. You don't have to worry too much. Although we haven't known each other long. In the short time I have been with you I have been able to see that you and brilliant. Maybe even more than I can see for myself. Just do what you know how to do. Arya said with a smile trying to comfort me. She was really right. I have a knowledge many years ahead of this world. I need to believe in myself and everything will be fine. After our little conversation a few minutes passed and soon we arrived at the entrance of the castle. My walk with Arisa was quite quiet, not because we had no subjects. I spent most of the time thinking about possible diseases that could be transmitted in the city by animals, viruses, etc. Probably Arisa realized this and decided not to interrupt me. I am really grateful to her for this. We easily passed the guards and entered the castle grounds. I am sure that Arya being the youngest sister of the king had a hand in this. The carriage kept moving to the part where the carriages were and as soon as it got there Arya and I got off of it, Arya took me inside the castle. The structure of this place was really fantastic. But I don't think they use bricks. It would be much more resistant if they used bricks to do this. While I was thinking about this Arya took me to a room and asked me to wait there. The room was pretty simple with a table in the center and some chairs. I assumed that was a waiting area. Stay here while I talk to my brother. Please don't leave here. They might end up arresting you if they think you and someone suspicious. Alright, I'll be waiting here. After that Arya left and I waited in the room for almost one hour. Being honest it took longer than I thought it would. 
I was almost asleep when the door was opened again. But instead of Arya who was at the door was a woman I didn't know wearing a maid's outfit. The king is ready to see you, Ransama, said the woman with a cold expression. Her face showed no expression whatsoever which made me a little uncomfortable. Even more so for the fact that Arya had disappeared and left me alone. After breathing deeply, I calmed down and started to follow the maid. We walked down the corridor until we reached a large door. Some parts of the door glowed in gold which I assumed was gold. The two guards that were in front of the door opened it giving me space to enter. As soon as I entered a huge hall was present in front of me. A long red carpet extended to the end of the hall where there was a step going up. On the slightly higher part of the step there were six thrones. On the thrones there were five people sitting. One of them was a very handsome man. His hair was blonde joining with his golden eyes. On the smaller thrones next to the person I assumed was the king there were two boys. While one of them was looking at me with a wild smile on his face the other was analyzing me with a calm and composed look. The one who was looking at me with a wild look had matching blonde hair along with equally golden eyes. He looked like a copy of his father. The one who was looking at me with an analytical look had white hair with blue eyes. Beside the king's throne was another throne that was empty. From the way the seats were being set I assumed that was the queen's seat. Beside the queen's seat were two girls. One of them had long blonde braided hair while her eyes were blue. Beside her was the person I had seen earlier. She wore a beautiful white dress that enhanced her angelic beauty. Her platinum white hair danced softly in the air with the help of the wind. Her golden eyes looked up at me causing me to be mesmerized by that pair of golden eyes. 7. Chapter 21 Getting to know the royalty of Solaris If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. As soon as I came out of my days, I seized myself and knelt in front of the king and his sons. I'm sure I must have been extremely rude but he didn't seem to mind. You may raise your head. As soon as the king said this, I lifted my head and looked in the direction of the king. With that I could see where Arisa was. She was a little further down wearing a white dress. Being honest it was kind of strange to see her wearing a dress but that doesn't mean it didn't suit her. In my opinion she looked quite beautiful. She looked at me and gave a wave of her hand while keeping a smile on her face. My sister told me that you possess some degree of medical knowledge is that true? Asked the king drawing my attention to him again. Being honest I was afraid. I finally realized. If I do anything wrong, I can be killed. Maybe even my family will have to be killed along with me. But even though I had already made up my mind, I will go all the way. And more than anything, I want to see her smile. Yes, that is true, your majesty. As soon as I answered that the king's eyes seemed to become more alert. His sons also seemed to be talking something but from where I was standing it was impossible for me to hear. You do know what can happen to you and your family if we find out that you are lying, don't you? I am aware. I knew very well what he meant by that. But that would not be enough to frighten me. I have confidence in my knowledge. After that he kept looking at me for a few seconds. It seemed like he was analyzing me. I think he is trying to figure out if I was really telling the truth or not. Very well. Saying this the king turned to Arya. Arya, may I ask you to take him to the waiting room again? I will notify the royal doctors about this. And of course, answered Arya with a big smile. After that Arya and I were walking back to the waiting room. Why did you disappear out of nowhere? Huh? Well, because my brother wanted to test you. Test me? But why? When I said that Arya looked at me with a suspicious look, she really didn't seem to believe that I hadn't understood the reason. You really don't know? Arya said with an accusing look, I could think of a few reasons. But there was one that stood out and fit the current situation. Several people came before me saying they could cure the queen. As soon as I said that Arya showed a satisfied smile. Exactly, most of those people started talking nonsense when they came under pressure. My brother wanted to see if you wouldn't give in to the pressure and start making excuses. I see, I hope I do well. I said with an unsure voice, there was no way I wasn't. My family could also end up dead because of my mistake. But letting a person die when they could have been saved simply because of fear and something I wouldn't accept. In this life I would live by my beliefs. You don't have to worry so much, Arya said beside me. I recommended you because I trusted your intelligence. 
I think you already realize but I don't see you as a child anymore. After saying this she looked at me with a serious face. Show me that I wasn't wrong. After that Arya took me to the waiting room where we stayed there for some time. Arya told me a little about the queen's symptoms and that gave me several ideas of why she was unwell. While we were talking in the waiting room a maid opened the door and told us that the queen was ready to see us. This time Arya went with me which made me feel much more at ease. We walked through the castle until we came to a door that seemed to be the room the queen was staying in. As soon as the maid opened the door Arya and I entered drawing the attention of everyone inside. There were about three people examining the queen and some people wearing clothes with good fabrics. The king and his sons were also present. I assumed that those examining the queen were the doctors and those looking at the situation were some nobles. I started walking along with Arya to get closer to the queen. TSK. As I was walking, I heard a noise coming from one of the men who seemed to be the nobles. As soon as I looked at him, I felt something strange from that man. He seemed to be extremely angry about something. Moreover, the way he was looking at me, you could tell he hadn't liked me at all. Well, I can even understand him. They want a child to try to cure the queen. I think I would also be angry if I were in the same situation as him. Ignoring what had happened I stopped a little away from the queen. Arya had told me that as soon as we entered, I was to wait at a certain distance until the royal doctors finished examining the queen. After a few minutes the doctors stopped examining the queen and looked at each other. They shook their heads to the side. Apparently, they had no idea how to treat the queen. The king and his children's faces turned extremely dark at this. As I was lost in thought looking at them Arya tapped me on the shoulder bringing me back to reality. Your turn. When Arya said this all eyes turned to me. I could tell exactly what most of the people in this room were thinking. And they sure weren't very good thoughts. They were probably thoughts like, why did they bring a child here? Do, they really want to let him examine the queen. But there was no way they could say that out loud. They couldn't do anything to help the queen. Insulting me would only lead to a possible cure not being possible anymore. My dear readers, I must apologize to you. This arc that we entered in Solis was supposed to be longer. But as I have the habit of doing the chapters and not saving a power outage here at home made me lose almost all of this arc. And as I was already entering another ended up forgetting most of the scenes. If you find this arc rushed and because of this. I sincerely apologize to you for this my mistake. Now I'm saving whenever I can so that this does not happen again. 6. Chapter 22. The Cause of the Queen's Illness. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. I walked towards the queen who was lying on the bed under the eyes of everyone in the room. As soon as I approached her, I noticed that the queen was sweating a lot and her breathing was unsteady. As soon as I put the palm of my hand on her forehead my hand immediately became hot. At first, I thought she might have a fever but soon discarded this idea since the people of this world have an herbal remedy for fever. As the remedy is not very well prepared the effect is not as good as in my past life. But the important thing is that it works. I am sure that at least one of these doctors has tried it. With this in mind some other ideas came to me. With this in mind I started to touch her legs and arms and search for some reaction. And just as I imagined as soon as I touched her right leg the queen gave a little groan of pain. Pulling her dress away a little I could see that there was a swollen area on her foot. There were two bite marks on the swollen area along with the redness. I was absolutely sure that this was an animal bite. Probably from a snake or a spider. But what intrigued me most about this situation was the fact that the queen had been bitten by some animal inside the castle. Although the queen went to orphanages from time to time, she usually took guards along with her. Some guards would also go to the place before the queen to inspect the place and see if it was out of danger. This can only mean that this happened inside the castle while someone trusted was visiting her. With this in mind I suddenly start to tremble. That's, that's attempted murder against royalty isn't it? My thoughts all went that way. I didn't know why. But there was someone trying to kill the queen. Maybe one of those people from inside this room was the culprit. Sighing to calm myself down I decide to leave this subject aside. Now that I know the probable reason why the queen is sick. I also know how to act. I will probably be able to cure her. If you give me everything. I need I think she will be back to normal within a month and a half. 
As soon as I said this everyone looked surprised at me. The king and his sons were with happy expressions while the doctors were dumbfounded and talking among themselves. Some nobles were a little relieved, but there was one person among these nobles who was clearly not happy with the situation. It was only for a moment. But I'm sure I heard a slap of the tongue coming from the man who looked at me with contempt and anger as soon as I entered this room. No one but me seemed to have heard this as everyone had their reasons to be excited. The most striking thing about the man was his mustache. He was fiddling with his mustache while looking disinterestedly at what we were doing. With all this my first suspect for sure was that man. How exactly did you find out the reason for the queen's illness? The one who asked was one of the three doctors on the scene. He was looking at me with interest as were the other two doctors behind him. I didn't know if it was a good idea to say that out loud. If the perpetrator who made possible the sting on the queen's leg heard this she might be even more on alert. What happened Ren? Noticing that I was in trouble Arya walks to my side. As soon as I gesture with my hand telling her to crouch down Arya crouches down and puts her ear close to my mouth. With that I tell her the possible cause of the queen's illness as well as the possible assassination attempt. I also told her that it was very likely that the assassin was in this room. Even after hearing what I said Arya continued with her expression unchanged. After this she approached the doctors who were trying by all means to talk to me and took them to another corner of the room. She was probably disguisedly telling them the reason why I had not spoken to them. Leaving this matter to Arya I turned my attention to the queen again. How I will cure her is quite simple. I will use a method from my past life called antivenom serum. From what I know when someone is bitten by a snake in this world the person has to stay in bed for a few days while they wait for the poison to go away on its own. Although it sounds crazy since the mortality rate is extremely high it actually works for people in this world. Although the reason is probably not clear because their immunity is many times higher than that of a person on earth. This also explains why the queen is alive even though so much time has passed since the bite. But first I would need to speak to the king alone. I also want to tell him that this was possibly an assassination attempt against the queen. Your majesty, I would like you to give me one month to make the medicine that might cure the queen. As soon as I said that I felt everyone's focus on me again. Hump, does this commoner think he has any right to ask your majesty for anything? Said the man who was looking at me with contempt from the moment I entered this room. It's all right Marquis Barton, I allow it. Be but your majesty. Are you really going to entrust such an important matter to a child? I could understand at once what he was saying. Although I am very angry what could I say? I am only a commoner while he is a nobleman of this kingdom. And of course they will believe what he says instead of me. Marquis Barton, I wish you would stop speaking ill of the guest of honor my sister has brought. With those words the Marquis quickly fell silent. But I could see that he was looking with even more contempt and anger towards me while I was thinking about this. I didn't notice that someone was approaching me at a slow pace. You don't have to pay him much mind. Marquis Barton has always treated everyone who isn't noble or royalty with coldness. The person who said this to me was the same person I had seen in the carriage that day. This time her golden eyes glanced in my direction. If I could describe her in one word it would surely be beautiful. 6. Chapter 23. Conversation with the Prince. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. The princess suddenly looked at me with a surprised expression, but soon after returned to her usual face. Thank you. As soon as she said that I finally realized that I had said that out loud, my face started to heat up thinking that she or how could I say that out loud? I'm an idiot or what, even more in a situation like this. Man she must find me extremely insensitive. I'm sorry about that princess. I let my thoughts speak louder for a second. Hearing my words, the princess continued to stare at me for a few seconds before giving a sigh. You don't have to worry about that. I'm used to being called pretty anyway. Leaving that aside, and true that you can heal my mother? When the princess asked this I could understand why she had approached me. For a moment I thought it was because she had taken an interest in me. But in the end it was just because I was the guy who could heal her mother. I let out a small laugh at that thought. I am sure of it. She was probably poisoned by a spider or a snake. But from the shape and size of the mark and more likely it was a snake. 
All we need to do and find the snake that bit her or find another one as long as it is of the same species. I explained to the princess in the lowest tone possible. I didn't want the possible culprit to hear what we were saying and try to interfere with anything. She seemed to think about something for a few seconds but shook her head to the side turning her attention back to me. Anyway, the royal family is counting on your help. I promise you will be duly rewarded if you manage to heal my mother. I gave a smile to the princess answer but inside I was a little sad. To begin with I didn't accept Arya's request aiming at some reward. I simply wanted to help the princess I saw that day. But there is nothing I can do. This is the first time we spoke. It will be an honor to help you. The moment I said that the princess stared at me for a few seconds. You. She was about to say something but soon stopped. Is something wrong? No, no and nothing. Said the princess shaking her head. After that everyone left the room to let the queen rest. The nobles went to their mansions at the king's request. Barton tried to insist for a while that I should stay here since he was suspicious of me but fortunately that didn't last long and he also went to his mansion. I was in the waiting room again. Arya didn't tell me the reason for bringing me here but as she told me to wait and that's exactly what I'm doing. While waiting inside the room I heard the door being opened. Arya have you done what you said you were going to do? I said. But instead of Arya's voice another voice sounded through the room. Excuse me but my aunt is talking to my father right now. Hearing this voice, I turned to see who had entered. The first thing my eyes caught was a white hair. Followed by blue eyes. I immediately remembered this person. It is an honor to see you again prince. I said after kneeling down. As soon as he saw what I did. He seemed surprised for a few seconds but then let out a small laugh. You don't need to worry about formalities. I didn't come here as a prince. I wanted to talk to you so I waited for my aunt to leave. As soon as he said that he walked over to the couch in front of me and sat down. You can sit down. It will be uncomfortable to talk to you if you keep kneeling on the floor. He said as he pointed to the couch in front of him. Once I sat down, he stared at me for a few seconds before starting the conversation. You, you like my sister, don't you? When he said that I couldn't hide my surprise, today was the first time we had seen each other. How did he know that already? Although I thought of him as an analytical guy. I didn't think he could really read me in such a short time. I know what you must be thinking. But the reason I know this is quite simple. You're not good at hiding it you know. I'm sure my sister has figured this out too. As soon as the prince said this I was immediately depressed. I mean, she already knows this. And in our last conversation I was a bit rude to her. I don't think my sister hates you. Although I don't think she likes you either. But I can at least say that she has taken an interest in you. Hearing the prince's words, I was confused again but since I didn't know if I could ask something, I simply stayed quiet in my seat. You can talk, after all, it's only a conversation if both parties talk, isn't it? Said the prince with a smile on his face. Hearing his words, I gathered my courage and finally said what was on my mind. Why do you think she was interested in me? As soon as I asked that he was surprised as if he couldn't believe if I had really asked that question. Well, you probably don't know this, but my sister is extremely intelligent. You could say she is a genius. Because of this she easily became interested in the mysterious ex, a person who came out of nowhere and brought a revolutionary invention. To tell you the truth it wasn't only my sister, but the whole royal family that became interested in you. I was a little surprised by what he told me, although I knew that the manual water pump I made was way ahead of its time I never stopped to think how revolutionary it would be. But listening to the prince's words I finally realized that maybe I had exaggerated a little. But well, and good for them to get used to it. I intend to do a lot more in the future. It will be bad for me if you are surprised at only this level of technology. 5. Chapter 24. Malicious Schemes. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. As I was lost and thought the prince spoke again. Anyway, that's all I came to talk to you about. Saying this he stood up and walked to the door. As soon as he touched the knob to open it, he turned and looked in my direction. I'm sure we'll see you soon, see you Ren. As soon as he said that he opened the door and left, I stood still for a while trying to digest what just happened. I thought so the first time I saw him but now I'm sure. This prince is someone hard to deal with. After that I stayed in the room for some more time. 
In the meantime a maid came and brought a tray containing tea and cookies. If there is one thing I can say is that the cookies of this world are extremely tasty. These cookies I am eating and made from a fruit that looks like the cocoa of my world so this is basically chocolate cookies. As I was enjoying the cookies the door was opened again. This time it was Arya who had entered, but with her were also two people I didn't think I would meet so soon. Sorry for the delay Rin, I thought it would be better if my brother heard from his own mouth the method to cure my sister-in-law, besides. Emmy insisted that she wanted to come along with us anyway, Arya said as soon as she entered the room. Behind her were the king and the princess, remembering what the prince said a few minutes ago my cheeks turned red. But in seconds they returned to normal. I need to focus on what is important now. Soon everyone was seated as they looked in my direction. Very well, then I will start with the basics. As soon as I said that all three nodded. As you may already know the queen was most likely poisoned by a snake or a spider. But looking at the size of the bite and the condition my hypothesis is that it is a snake bite. As soon as I said that the king seemed to think about something for a while and then said, That's strange. The only way I can think of for a snake to get into the palace is for someone to bring one in from the outside. I also think the same. I find it hard for a snake to be in the palace since it is so far away from where they normally live. Saying this I saw that everyone started thinking about it quite a bit. I'm sure they also noticed that there is something fishy about the queen's illness. I apologize if this sounds disrespectful your majesty. Do you know anyone who has contacts with snakes or might have a pet one? Saying this the person who answered my question was not the king but the princess. I have learned that the Marquis Barton runs some business related to poison. Stopping to think we never wondered where he got the poison from. The princess said. Yes I learned that too. Said the king. But why would he try to kill the queen? What is he trying to achieve? Listening to the king's words some ideas come to mind. But they are mostly ideas that I have seen in anime and manga. This kind of development is quite common after all. Does the Marquis Barton have an older daughter? As soon as I said that the king seemed to have remembered something. Yes, his first daughter is 28 years old. Then I guess we have a reason. He probably wanted to marry his daughter to you aiming to rise to the rank of duke. Hearing my words, the king closes his fist tightly. I am sure he is quite angry. But with this atmosphere it becomes a bit difficult to continue. Changing the subject, the method I will use to cure the queen will be quite simple. I will extract the snake venom that was used on the queen and I will make a cure from it. Hearing my words, the princess seemed to have taken interest in my idea. How exactly would that work? And is it even possible to make a cure from a poison? The princess asked. It is possible. First I will inject the poison into a large animal like a horse. From there the horse will produce defense agents against the poison. After that I will draw the horse's blood and from the horse's blood, I will make a serum for the queen. The princess was visibly surprised by what I spoke. But not only her but also Arya and the king were with the same expression. I had never thought of such a method. It is true that horses rarely die from snake bites but to think that you could make a medicine using their blood, said the princess amidst her thoughts. I would start making the serum immediately if I could, but unfortunately we are lacking the main material to make it. Listening to my words everyone seemed to understand what I was getting at. Basically we need the animal that bit the queen to make the serum. The problem is that we have no idea where the snake is. My best guess is that if the Marquis Barton is really the culprit the animal must be somewhere in his house. You don't have to worry about this matter. Start preparing everything you need to make the serum. The royal family will pay for the costs. We will also issue an order to the Marquis Barton's mansion to try to find the snake. As you wish. After that Arya, the king, and the princess were getting ready to leave the room we were talking in. Just before leaving the princess turned and looked in my direction. You know. I enjoyed talking to you. I hope we will have more opportunities to talk in the future. As soon as I said that the princess turned and walked away along with the others leaving me alone in the room again. After sighing I sit down on the couch taking away all the nervousness I was feeling. For a school vacation this is being pretty intense. Alright, time to start making the preparations to make the serum. 6. Chapter 25. Conclusion. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After all that happened at the castle, 
I was working hard these days to prepare the serum for the queen. I was informed by a messenger from the palace that they quickly started the investigation at the Marquis house as soon as I left the castle. Since this was a matter that concerned the queen, I was already expecting them to act as quickly as possible, and in the end, they did find several suspicious things in Marquis Barton's house, at least enough to incriminate him. And among these suspicious things was a basement in his mansion where he kept several poisonous snakes attached. From what I was told they were all of the same species and seemed to have an extremely slow potency venom. This explains why the queen is still alive even though she was bitten so long ago and has a stronger immune system than people on earth. The species of snake is one that I have never seen before in my past life. It's probably a species that only exists in this world. Because of this I was a little afraid that maybe the serum wouldn't work but I quickly dismissed this thought. Thinking about it won't help me at all so I'd better do what I can to make it work. With this in mind I continue walking with steady steps towards Henry's workshop. The royal family has given us two of their strongest horses so that we can make the serum. Although the inn where I am staying has a stable to put the horses, I decided it would be better to leave them in Henry's workshop. The equipment to make the serum is at his house anyway. As soon as I arrived at Henry's workshop I headed to the back of his house, and there where we were keeping the two horses that we were going to use to make the serum. You've finally arrived boy. I was greeted by Henry as soon as I arrived at the place where the horses were. Sorry for the delay. I was a little nervous so I couldn't sleep well last night, and when I woke up today it was quite late. I said after approaching Henry. Anyway, I have already prepared everything you asked for. Although I don't know how exactly these things work, I have to say they are truly intriguing tools. Henry said as he looked at the things that were on a wooden table. On the table Henry was looking at were the tools that I asked him to make for me. The tools were basically syringe and a blood bag to store the blood in. Although they are not really similar to the ones from my old world it was still a nice job with what we had on hand at the moment. On the table was also a good amount of the venom of the snake that probably bit the queen. I say probably because we are still not sure if this is the same snake. But since there was only one type of snake in Marquis Barton's mansion we assumed it was this one. I hope we are right, taking a deep breath. I began the process while being watched by Henry. So, how exactly is this serum made? The medical field is not my area of expertise but I am interested in this equipment you asked me to make. Henry asked behind me. It's quite simple really. I will inject the horse bit by bit with the poison. In a few days his body will generate antibodies to neutralize the snake venom. After that I will simply draw his blood which is already cured. Hearing my answer Henry made an uncomfortable face. It looked like he was getting a bit of a misconception of the situation. Are you sure you want to give horse blood to the queen? Hearing his question, I let out a small laugh. I'm not going to use his blood for real. I will do a centrifugation on the blood to get the plasma out of it the plasma and that we will use to make the cure. I don't really understand what you mean but I think I get the gist. After that a few days passed, and finally it was time to take the blood from the horse. I also asked Henry to make a centrifuge for me. Obviously I couldn't make one exactly like the one from my past life because of the difference in technology. With this we were able to complete the serum and were administering it to the queen, and after a week she was completely fine. I also explained to the palace doctors the process for making the serum. And with this I was able to make the centrifuge machine another invention of X. There will be two versions of the clock. One made of gold for nobles and another made of a cheaper material for commoners. The important thing is that in the end everyone will be able to know the time accurately. In the end my stay in the capital of Solaris turned out to be longer than expected. I would probably get a scolding at school for missing so many days. With this in mind the king gave me a kind of royal seal or something. He said that if I showed it to the teacher she would understand that I was doing something in the service of royalty. To be honest this saved me. I need to continue to be an exemplary student to enter the academy of the kingdom. Having so many failures on my resume would certainly hurt me in the future. What are you thinking so seriously? Bernard who was standing next to me asked. Suddenly this morning Bernard called me with enthusiasm while saying that he had something he wanted very much to show me. Although I don't know what exactly he intends to show me I decided to go with him. As I will return to my city tomorrow morning I thought I would have no problems. While I was thinking about this the cart stopped at one of the commercial streets of the kingdom. 
As soon as we got off the cart Bernard stopped in front of a store. But as the store was totally empty, I still didn't understand what exactly he wanted to show me. 5. Chapter 26. Interviews. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. As you may know currently your products are published through my stores, said Bernard turning towards me. I just nodded. Originally I intended to give you this when you graduate, but I have decided that you are ready for this now. After that Bernard walked to the entrance of the building and opened the door. Congratulations Ren, from now on this will be your store. Bernard said with a smile on his face, when he said that I just locked up where I was, I had no idea how to react to this. I just kept looking around not believing that this whole place would now be mine. Are you sure about this? I asked still in doubt. Of course, I am. I was already thinking of giving you one of my stores. But I thought it would be better if we bought one from scratch for you to decorate the way you see fit. Bernard said with a smile on his face. After that Bernard and I started to look at the store. It was a very simple store. I realized that the store was a little big but I would not complain about the size. Besides that the store had a second floor which was comforting. As it was a gift I obviously would not be paying for anything but Bernard told me that the following year I would already need to pay taxes, apparently. The royal family knowing I was going to open a store decided to let me have one year tax free. I guess it was another way for them to thank me for curing the queen. What about the employees? I asked in doubt, to tell the truth the store was already in a state where it could function. We could make changes over time but it is impossible to open a store without employees. Hearing my question Bernard looked thoughtful for a few seconds but soon seemed to have an idea. What do you say we have a job interview? Bernard said with a smile, since I like the idea, I nodded my head. Sounds like a great idea. After that Bernard started posting about a new store that was going to open and that she was hiring new employees. Since there were no chairs that we could use in my new store we opted to do the interview in the Merchants Guild. I learned that although it is rare, sometimes some mass hiring happens through the Guild. Although I don't know the criteria to make this possible I assumed the reason I got it was because Arya saw me as a friend. And obviously as a future great business partner, as I must say. She is quite sincere with her feelings. And with that in a few hours we were conducting several interviews. The interviews were working in the following way. First we would send someone into our room. After that we would start asking questions. The questions were like, Have you ever worked in anything like this before? What are your previous experiences? Have you ever worked in a store similar to the one that we are going to open? Those were basically the kinds of questions. Most of them seemed extremely curious about the fact that there was a child among the interviewers. Most of the time they just ignored me. But whenever Bernard said that the new store he was opening would be mine, their reactions were always amusing to watch. Being honest none of these people caught my attention. While I was thinking about it the door was opened again. But this time what entered was not an adult. What entered was a small girl. She seemed to be a bit bigger than me in height so I assumed she was also older. So, have you worked on anything like this before? Hearing Bernard's question the girl seemed to be quite uneasy but after giving a small sigh she finally answered. And no, this will be my first time, but I can wash the floor. In my house I usually do the housework since mom is always sick so um, I'm good at that. Hearing the girl's answer, I felt a little bad. Not like I didn't know that not everyone could have good lives but hearing this from a little girl was kind of surprising. Bernard seemed a little disappointed even though he had listened to the girl's situation. I imagine that for people who were born in this world this is something normal. But if I can help someone then I have to help. Before Bernard could say anything, I interrupted him and spoke to the girl. Is there anything else you can do? Hearing my question, the girl looked confused as if she didn't expect it. She probably came here with a ready answer expecting to be accepted or rejected right away. I am good with medicine. I always made my own medicine to give to my mother. Hearing her answer, I realized that this was a good opportunity. In the future I wanted to do something similar to a hospital in my past life. The only problem was the lack of people who had knowledge in the subject. Do you have any siblings? Hearing my question, she looked confused but soon answered. Yes I have three. How old are they? All three are eight years old. They are a year younger than me. 
Are they working on anything? No, they usually do odd jobs around the kingdom. Hearing her answer, I had already made my decision. Great, I will hire the four of you. Your brothers will train to be future managers while you will be my first apprentice for something new. I want to do. Hearing my answer, a huge smile broke out on the girl's face. And many thanks, I'll do my best, my brothers too and of course. Hearing her excited answer, I opened a smile on my face and dismissed her. You can go now, we will contact you later. Ah, by the way, you left all your information with the receptionist, didn't you? Hearing my question, she nodded and left the room. Are you sure about that? Said Bernard beside me, although I can understand the reason for his concern. I was confident. They will do fine, besides, if I can help, I would rather help. Hearing my response, Bernard lets out a laugh. Sounds like something you would do, Bernard said with a smile. 6. Chapter 27, Amy. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After leaving the Merchant's Guild I started to run towards my house. I wanted to let Mom know as soon as possible that I had managed to pass the interview. Although I don't know the reason for having a child as one of the interviewers it doesn't change the fact that I was hired. Running for some time I finally reached my house. As soon as I opened the door, I ran past it heading towards my mom's room. As soon as I opened the door to my mother's room and entered, lying on the bed was my mother. My mother has always had a weak body. Unfortunately her medicine is quite expensive so I work several different jobs like cleaning and washing dishes to be able to afford my mother's medicine. It's not as if there is no way to cure my mother permanently. The problem is that the medicine that would cure my mother is extremely expensive. Even if I spent the whole year without buying anything, I still wouldn't have enough to buy it. Finally that was going to change. While walking down the street I saw a flyer. On the flyer it said that they were hiring people for a new store that was opening in the future. Although I went to the store with the thought of not getting through a miracle happened and I actually got hired. Although... I wonder why that boy was asking me the questions and not the adult next to him. That boy looked about eight or nine years old. He must be my age or my brother's age. While these thoughts were going through my head, I didn't notice that I had been called by my mother. Amy, are you listening? My mother asked. Oh, sorry mom. I was lost in thought. I replied with a shy smile on my face. Hearing my answer, my mother simply smiled at me and tapped lightly on the bed asking me to sit up. As soon as I sat on the bed my hand put her hand on my head and started stroking. I love when she does that, it makes me feel calm. Somehow it makes me feel that we will make it. I'm sorry for depending so much on you dear. I hope someone will come along who appreciates your efforts. Said my mother, this was a common monologue between us. For some reason my mother felt guilty about the fact that she couldn't work to help around the house. I never really cared about that. As long as my mother gets better I don't care how much work I have to do. Oh, and true, I got a new job mom. They also said they will employ Dean, Fate, and Leo. As soon as she heard what I said my mother was totally surprised. To tell you the truth I was expecting her to jump for joy or something. Are you sure it is safe? You are only nine years old while your brothers are eight. I could understand why my mom was worried. But still I didn't want to let this opportunity pass me by. The pay for this new job would probably be pretty decent for me even though I'm still a kid. It would help a lot with my mom's medicine. I know what you must be thinking mom. But you can rest assured. One of the people who was at the interview was Mr. Bernard. As soon as I said this my mother became noticeably calmer. The reason for this was quite simple. Bernard was an extremely well-known merchant. Almost anyone who wants to get into the merchant business knows who he is. For me and my mother it was no different. Also, there was a boy in the interview as well. From his height he must have been about 8 years old. Although I didn't know why as soon as I entered the room. He was the one asking me the questions. After that I told my mother how the whole interview went. Including about the questions the boy asked me. I also told her that I would be hired in something new that he intended to create. In the end when she asked me to describe the boy who interviewed me. I tried to describe him in as much detail as I could remember. Listening to everything I had said and seeming to have come to her own conclusion a single word came out of my mother's mouth. Genius. I totally agreed with what my mother had told me. 
I have always been told that I am quite intelligent for my age, to the point of being able to study by myself without adult help. Even in my vision that boy was a genius. While we were talking about various things suddenly my mother has a coughing fit. Mom, are you okay? I asked already going into desperation. Although this is not the first time this has happened, I never know how to act in these moments. As soon as she put her hand to her mouth, I could see a small red liquid in her hand. My mother quickly wiped her hand and put a smile back on her face. But at this point it was impossible not to notice how tired she was. I'm going to go check on Dean, Fate, and Leo mom, please rest. I said trying to give my mom an excuse to get some sleep. If I didn't give some excuse, she would try every way to stay strong in front of me pretending everything was fine. It's okay Amy. As soon as my mother said that I got out of bed and walked to the door. Amy. As soon as I touched the doorknob, I was called from behind causing me to look at my mother again. Good luck in your new job. Said my mother with a smile on her face. I answered the gesture with a smile on my face and spoke cheerfully before leaving the room. Thanks mom. I hope you get better soon. Saying that I finished opening the door and went outside the room. 6. Chapter 28. Let's make glass. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After the interviews I was heading towards my new store, I decided that I would stay a little longer in the capital of Solaris to put the finishing touches on my store, one of which would be painting and organizing. I intend to make this store like the stores of my past life. But there is only one problem that prevents me from going ahead with my plan. In this world they don't have glass yet so, I have already decided that I will go as soon as possible to Henry and try to ask for his help with this. I am sure he will be interested in the glass he will make. But besides windows we will also be able to make several other things using glass. Such as glasses, plates and even cutlery. I am sure that I will also make a lot of money selling all this in this world. I will be the pioneer of all the technologies from my old world. While I was thinking about this, I could already see my store from where I was standing. In front of it there were some people wearing overalls. There were also several gallons of paint next to them. These people were hired by Bernard to paint my store. After it is painted, I will start decorating the inside. In the future I intend to make modifications by putting store windows in front with my products on display. But unfortunately I will have to do the windows first. Good afternoon. Are you the people Bernard hired to paint the store? I asked as soon as I approached the men. Seeming to have noticed me they all looked at me with doubt on their faces. Oh, you must be the boy that Bernard said was going to open a store. Although I was thinking he was joking by the looks and truth. Said the man as he looked me up and down. Anyway, we are the people Bernard hired. Said the man again. That's great to hear. I've been waiting for you. I think Bernard already said this but I want you to paint all the walls white. Including the second floor. My plan was to have almost the entire store painted white. I wanted to give a clean and hygienic feeling to everyone who entered the store. Yes, he had already told us that. The job will probably take about three hours to complete. Alright, I will need to do a few things in the meantime so I leave my store in your hands. I said starting to walk away, the men waved their hands and picked up the gallons of paint and carried them into the store. It looked like they would get right on with the work. With that finished it was finally time to go see Henry. I want to see the final result of the watches I asked him to make for me and I will also order the glass. With this in mind I walked to Henry's store. The sun would be down in a few hours which made me wonder if those men would spend the night painting my store. The streets of the capital were quite busy even with the night coming. The city at night was also quite beautiful with the various lights illuminating the street. As I was thinking about this I had finally arrived at Henry's store. As soon as I entered the store to my surprise Henry was sitting in front of the counter. Oh, you finally decided to show your faces, Henry said with a raised eyebrow. Haha, ha, sorry about that, there's a lot going on so I didn't have time to come here. Hearing my words Henry sighed. Anyway, I assume you've come here for that, haven't you? It's already done, it's in the back. Saying this Henry got up and started walking to the back of his store where his workshop was. Once we got to the place it was finally in sight. It had a look similar to those old wall clocks. It seemed to be working perfectly although the time is wrong. And your first time seeing it no? 
Bernard had seen it when he came here before, but what do you think? Henry asked as he looked at me. Honestly, what should I say? I'm actually surprised he was able to make something so identical to my past life just with details I gave him. Isn't Henry the real genius here? I thought as I looked at the watch. I also made the wrist version you asked for, but well, for now they are just prototypes. You can test them and tell me if there is something wrong with them, Henry said. I plan to use the one that hangs on the wall in my new store. I think it will be able to show what to expect from the new technologies that we will have in the future. Hmm? And the wrist one, what do you intend to do with it? Henry asked. Taking the wristwatch in my hand, I started to look at its details. It was still with a metallic color. It and quite similar to the old wristwatches of my old world. I intend to paint it to give as a gift to someone. I said making Henry look at me with a smile on his face. What? I asked not understanding the reason for his smile. Possibly your gift could be for a girl. Bernard asked widening his smile. Looking away I decided to answer the truth. And yes well. I don't know if she will accept but I still want to give her a present before I go back to my city. I said as I put my wristwatch in my pocket. Anyway, there is something new I want you to create for me. Bernard raised an eyebrow upon hearing my words. Again? Yes, I want to use this in my store. Although I may have some hindrances, I think this one will be pretty easy for you. I mean, I said as I looked at the clock on the table. After sighing Henry seemed to agree with what I was about to say. So, what do you want me to do this time? With a smile on my face I answered Henry's question with enthusiasm. This time, I want you to make glass for me. I said as a smile formed on my face. 5. Chapter 29. Mother-Daughter Reunion. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. While Ren was working on his idea to bring glass into this world, in a certain palace a princess was walking gracefully and calmly through a beautiful palace. The second princess Emmy Tulpal Solaris was going towards the garden that is in the center of the palace. That garden so to speak was private only to the queen. This garden was specially prepared by Emmy's father as a wedding present for her mother. The only people who can enter the garden are the people the queen herself invites. And while in one of her classes Emmy receives a call from her mother saying that she would like to meet her in her garden for tea while eating cookies. Although the message seems casual Emmy knows very well that in reality this is a way of saying that she wants to talk to Emmy. Walking down the hallway Emmy finally reached the door that led to the queen's garden. I am answering the queen's call, said Emmy to the two guards who were guarding the door. The guards looked at each other for a few seconds and then quickly stepped aside giving Emmy passage. As soon as one of the guards knocked on the door it opened from the inside. Emmy slowly walked inside and as soon as she entered her eyes were captivated by the beauty of the place. The queen's garden was commonly called the crystal garden. The reason for this was quite simple. All the flowers planted in the garden looked like crystals. Emmy walked slowly through the garden while admiring the beauty of the place. This was only the second time Emmy had entered the garden. The first was on her fifth birthday. On this birthday Emmy said that her present would be to spend an afternoon with her mother. Her mother easily accepted the invitation. They both spent an incredible afternoon in the crystal garden. Until today, this is Emmy's most precious memory with her mother. After walking for some time Emmy finally arrived at the center of the garden. On a small elevation it was possible to see a person sitting on a beautiful chair. Her beauty was such that it didn't even seem that the garden was the main attraction of the place. This person was drinking her tea with grace. Emmy looked delighted at that scene for a few seconds before a voice woke her up. You have arrived my child, please sit down, said the woman, Emmy's mother, queen of the Solaris kingdom. I am answering your call, Simi said as she bowed politely. Hearing her daughter's words, the queen pouted. Gee, we are not at any event at the moment, call me mother said the queen. As Emmy looked at the queen a sigh escapes her pretty lip. As you wish mother, the queen quickly shows a satisfied smile at that. Very well. Saying this she pointed to the chair that was opposite hers. Have a seat. Obeying her mother Emmy walked gracefully to the chair taking a seat right away. As soon as Emmy sat down in the chair her mother poured tea for her while, out of curiosity. As there is no glass in this world royalty eat with things made of metal while commoners eat with things made of wood. Pushing the tea to Emmy the queen began to speak. 
although I am not fully recovered I am much better than before, I hope to find an occasion to be able to thank you, said the queen taking a sip of her tea soon after, Emmy raised an eyebrow not understanding what this had to do with her, you know, your aunt told me something interesting about, Rin, as soon as the queen said this Emmy was surprised, Emmy didn't know that her mother knew that the name of the person who saved her was Rin, to Emmy her mother still only knew him by the name X, sending that thought away Emmy looked at her mother again, what exactly does the lady mean, the queen looked at Emmy's every move, her expression, her breathing, her pulse, the queen of the Solaris kingdom was feared by many because of this ability, she could easily tell if someone was lying, nervous, or anxious about something, it was truly a wonderful ability for a ruler but also a fearful ability for enemies. Although I already think you know, I will say it anyway, it seems that boy likes you, said Queen getting straight to the point. From Emmy's point of view this could only mean one thing, her mother was clearly interested in Rin, maybe even more than Emmy herself. Seeing that there would be no point in lying Emmy decided to tell the truth. Yes, I already knew about it, in fact I realized it when he came to examine you but why are you saying this now? The queen looked into Emmy's eyes for a few seconds before asking something Emmy was not expecting. Emmy, do you like him? The queen's question took Emmy by surprise. Emmy looked wide-eyed at her mother trying to see if it was a joke or not. But no matter how hard she looked her mother seemed to be totally serious. Sighing Emmy decided to answer her mother's question. Rather than like, this is more like interest, he seemed to me to be quite intelligent. I really value people like that. People like him are extremely valuable to the Solaris Kingdom. And that's what I think. Hearing Emmy's response the queen looked into her daughter's eyes analyzing her. It doesn't look like you are lying. But you know, he is not bound to our kingdom. If he wants to go somewhere else, we can't stop him. Although, I doubt he will. After all, you are here. Said the queen with a debauched smile on her face. Anyway it looks like you two will attend the academy when you turn 14. If you two fell in love and got married it would be a great blessing for the kingdom of Solaris. But I won't force you. Just as I married your father out of love I hope you and your brothers will do the same. Said Emmy's mother as she seemed to remember the past. Emmy just sighed and looked at the tea. A certain person came to her mind. A person that she didn't know until now was already in the mind of the person she loved the most. 5. Chapter 30. White and the Color of Hygiene. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. So, you're telling me that it's possible to make this glass, using sand? Henry asked with a clearly suspicious face. I had explained to him the basics of the process to make glass. I also expected this reaction from him. Being more specific what we are going to use is the silicon dioxide that is found in sand. Hearing my answer Henry looked thoughtful for a few seconds before turning to me. Give me a week. That was the only thing Henry said before turning around. He had probably started work immediately. Whenever something that interests him is in the middle. He disconnects himself from the outside world and focuses completely on his work. With that I left Henry's workshop and started walking towards the inn where I was staying. As soon as I arrived at the inn. I sat down at one of the empty tables. After ordering my dinner I waited in silence. By the way, have you heard? The Marquis Barden was arrested for trying to assassinate the Queen. While I was waiting for my dinner at my table a group of four men started talking close to where I was sitting. The table where I was sitting was close enough that I could hear without having to make an effort. I heard that she was poisoned. But you know how it is, you can't trust everything they say, said one of the men. No, she really was poisoned. A friend of mine works at the castle as a guard. He said that apparently the Marquis Barton wanted to get rid of the queen so that his eldest daughter could marry the king. Damn, these shitty nobles will do anything as long as it benefits them in the end. Listening to the men's conversation I could only think of one thing. And amazing how fast gossip spreads. I thought with a drop of my head. As I thought about it my dinner had finally arrived. Here is your order, Oniai-chan said the daughter of the inn owners as she approached my table with my dinner. With a smile on my face I thanked her and immediately started to eat. Being honest I was quite hungry. I had practically nothing to eat all day. While I ate my dinner, I continued to listen to the men's conversation. I had no choice anyway. 
The place I was sitting allowed me to listen even if I didn't want to. Although I don't know if it's true, I heard that the queen managed to heal herself. Huh? Are you serious? They told me that the poison still had no cure. How the hell did they get a cure so fast? From what I heard they called the person who built that tool that helps in the wells. But man, to think he understands medicine too. It must be nice to be smart. I'd be swimming in gold right now if I was just like him. Ha ha. With your intelligence the most you could do would be to teach how to throw the trash in the right place. Said one of the men mocking his friend. After that I finished my dinner and went up to my room. As soon as I lay down on the bed I blacked out. The next day I woke up early. I was very anxious to have a look at my store. With this in mind I had my breakfast and walked towards my store. After a few minutes of walking I finally reached the street where my store was. As soon as I saw my store I was totally surprised. It was exactly the way I imagined. Its front was totally white giving it a clean look. I walked inside the store and inside was the same. Who entered the store would feel the sensation of a clean and comfortable place. Going up to the second floor I found the men who were in charge of painting my store. They were finishing one last wall that was half finished. Oh you're here so what? He said looking around. He was probably referring to the painting. It's exactly the way I imagined it. I'm glad Bernard hired you. I said with a smile. Ha ha. Our store's motto is customer satisfaction. After that the men finished painting the last remaining wall and soon left. I was alone in my store finishing looking at the places where it was painted. The store actually looked quite similar to what I had imagined. Hum, the second floor I will do as a store while the second floor will be a medical clinic for now. Later on I intend to do a pharmacy slash hospital in another building I acquire. At the moment my plan was simple. Sell my products on the second floor while the second floor would be used to help sick people. Although it is not possible now. Who knows, maybe later on I will be able to do something like a shopping mall. I smiled at my idea. Anyway, first I need more stores. The shopping mall idea will come later. With this in mind all that is missing is the glass to finish the decoration of the store. As I have already hired the people it is practically all ready. Also I don't want to be too late to come back since I will miss many classes. In the end my goal has not changed yet. I still intend to enter the Academy of Solaris. And for this I still need good grades even with a recommendation from the king. Well not that it is difficult for me to get an A. And I wasn't bragging. Even if there is some subject. I don't know I can probably pass using the memories from my past life. With a smile on my face I left my store and headed towards the inn. As there was nothing else that needed my attention I decided I would spend this week walking around the capital. This should give enough time for Henry to finish the glass prototype. Although I'm not expecting it to be perfect since this is the first time Henry is making glass. His skills prove that I can expect something a little above average. 5. Chapter 31 Conclusion of the Store If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. While I was waiting for the glass to be ready a week easily passed, I didn't do particularly anything interesting in the time I was waiting. In general I just tasted the food of the capital and also took the opportunity to analyze what the level of technology is today. Even though in my hometown you could already get an idea, I still thought it was better to look at it from a larger perspective. And what better place for that than in the kingdom? But as I looked, I saw that this is basically what I expected, so I was not surprised. If I had to say one thing it was that there is ice cream in this world, but instead of calling it ice cream it is probably more correct to call it ice with juice. Basically they put ice in a pot and then pour a liquid like juice. It is far inferior to the ice cream of my old world but still tasty. I thought as I walked through the streets of the kingdom. I was going to Henry's store to find out how the glass was progressing. I also took advantage of this half time that I could be idle for a week to organize my store. I have already put a clock inside and bought counters where I will leave my products on display. On the second floor of the store there are already shelves that I will use to put the medicines that are being made. And of course, the second floor also serves as a laboratory to manufacture medicines. While several thoughts went through my head I finally arrived at Henry's store. As soon as I entered, I went to the back where the workshop was. 
Just as I thought Henry was not in the front of the store so I am sure that he is in the workshop, and just as I had thought Henry was in his workshop. Oh, you have finally arrived, Henry said with a smile. As I walked towards Henry, I noticed that there was something in front of him. As soon as I got to his side, I finally got a glimpse of the item. A huge transparent square was positioned on the wall. Henry had managed to make the glass I had requested. Looking at it with a surprised look I was met with a smug smile. Exactly as you imagined it isn't it? Henry said I simply managed to nod my head causing the smile on Henry's face to intensify. And he really was right. The glass had turned out almost perfect. A far cry from the initial shape I had imagined. How many of these did you make? Hearing my question Henry pointed to another corner of the workshop. Following his hand I saw that there were several other glasses just like the one in front of me. You have made so many, I said as I looked around impressed. With this I will be able to open my store even sooner than expected. Ha ha ha, I'm sure you will. After that Henry and I sat down and continued talking. I appreciate you helping me with this, I said with a smile. No need to thank me. I also find these ideas of yours very interesting. Whenever you have new ideas just come and see me and we will turn it into reality, Henry said. Thank you for that. Besides, I wanted to ask you a favor. Hearing my words, Henry raises an eyebrow waiting for me to continue. I need you to make as many of these glasses as you can by the day after tomorrow. How many do you think you can make by then? Hearing my words, Henry closed his eyes and then immediately answered me. I think I can make about 30 more at most. Hearing his answer, I put a hand on my chin thinking about the number. And a little less than I had thought but I think it is still good. Anyway I intend to sell them for a relative price so that everyone can buy. Okay, I intend to sell some in my store. I will be happy if you stock up from time to time. And of course I will pay for the glassware. Saying this I stood up getting ready to leave. But a thought came to my mind as I looked at the glassware. How the hell am I going to take them with me? As I thought about this a voice came from behind me. You don't have to worry about the glass. It will be at your store in a few hours. I figured you would want to take it today so I hired some people to take it to your store. Henry said. Thanks for that. I said with a small smile on my face. Oh, almost forgot. Here you go. I said as I handed Henry a piece of paper. As soon as Henry took the paper, he looked at what was written on it for a few seconds and then looked at me again. Do you want me to cut the glass to these measurements? Henry asked. Exactly, my store already has the spaces prepared to put the glass in. Hmm, okay, if it's just for cutting I should be done in a few minutes. With a smile I say goodbye to Henry. Thanks for that. Saying this I left Henry's store and went towards my store. I would organize a few more things until the glass arrived. My store already had the parts that would have the glass cut. And as I had given the orders so that Henry could cut them all that remained was to wait for the glass to arrive. With this in mind I arrived at my store in a few minutes. I soon began to organize what was missing while waiting for the glass to arrive. Knock knock. After hearing some knocks on the door, I went to the door hoping that it was the people who were going to bring the glass. And just as I had imagined the glasses had arrived. For men had brought most of them. As there were still some more, they would come back again. But even so the glasses they brought were the ones I asked Henry to cut. With this in mind I decided to position the glasses in their places. After a while I managed to put all the glass in its proper place. My store is really looking like the old stores that existed in my past life. As I said this a smile was visible on my face. 4. Chapter 32. Returning Home. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After opening my store, a week had passed. I spent that week putting the finishing touches on the store and showing the employees where they would be working. Among the employees were three women, two were clerks while the last one would manage my store. One man was working as the store's security guard in addition to the four children. Amy was working on the second floor with medicines and such while her three brothers were learning about how the store management works. As I plan to open more branches in the future this will be extremely beneficial in the long run. In the one week I had I tried to teach Amy everything I could about medicine. At least what I remembered. I also wrote two books called World of Medicine with the main diseases and how to cure them as well as methods for surgeries among others. Although I wanted to do more the most. 
I could do was two books, but well, in the future I intend to do much more. At the moment these two volumes will help Amy and in the future Amy will be able to teach other people. But basically, this was the summary of what I did. Currently I am traveling back to my hometown where I will finish my studies and prepare myself to enter the Academy of Solaris. The way back to my city was very quiet. We slept at night and continued during the day. And before I knew it, we were already arriving at the entrance to the city. As I came alone this time, it was not Bernard who brought me, but a carriage sent by the king, apparently, he still wanted to thank me for saving the queen's life, which shows how much he loves her, although I wanted to say goodbye to the princess unfortunately this was not possible. This was kind of obvious but it is not that easy to get an audience with royalty, but well, anyway I and she will see each other again at the academy. While these thoughts were going through my head, I passed the well as I walked towards my house. At the well some adults were getting water using something I helped to develop. A smile enveloped my lips as I saw this scene. As I walked through the city I passed the lower and middle class part. My family had moved to the upper class neighborhood while I was away. Or rather I asked them to move. Since I am earning a fairly high amount of money I thought we should enjoy a little luxury. But even if we are considered rich people in this world we are still not noble. As far as I know the only way to get a noble title is by achieving achievements. When the king recognizes your achievements, and if they are enough you get a noble title. Walking a little further I finally arrived at my house. Although I call it home this is more like a mansion than a house itself. As it is a relatively large house I asked my parents to hire some servants to come three times a week to clean the house. M.O.M. Dad Anna I'm home. I shouted as soon as I opened the door. Within seconds I could hear a noise coming from the second floor of the house. On the stairs leading to the second floor where I was Anna appears with a huge smile on her face. Oni Ai Chan, you have finally arrived. Saying this Anna rushes up and down the stairs hugging me soon after. I'm back Anna, I said with a smile on my face. While hugging Anna again I hear a noise coming from the second floor. This time my mother and father who appeared. Rin, we thought you would be home later, my mother said. Good to see you are doing well son, said my father with a smile on his face. After that me and my family gathered in the living room. My parents asked me to tell them everything I had done while I was in the kingdom, while Anna kept asking me if I had brought any gifts. And like a good brother I obviously brought her many gifts. But apart from that I told my parents about everything I had done, about my visit to the merchant's guild, my visit to the palace and also that I had healed the queen. I also told them about the store and also about the glassware. Of course I left out the fact that I had fallen in love with the princess. You really did quite a bit. Plus I'm glad to hear that you were able to help the queen. Maybe that will help with your recommendation to the academy, said my mother. My father simply nodded as if he understood something but I decided to ignore it. While we were catching up on things the night had come. After we had dinner again as a family it was finally time to go to sleep. In my room I was thinking about everything that had happened and also thinking about everything that was still going to happen. Maybe I will still visit other countries. I thought as I lay in bed, I didn't have any grandiose goals or anything. I just wanted to be happy in this new life since in my old one I unfortunately couldn't do anything. And since I am in another world I thought maybe it would be a good idea to go to new places. With this in mind I fall asleep. After that I spent my days going to the city school. Obviously I was asked the reason for my delay but as soon as I showed the stamp, I had earned from the king I managed to get away with it. I kept on getting the highest grades aiming for the academy of the kingdom. But I guess at this point I don't even need to try that hard anymore. But I decided that I would keep on getting the highest grades until I graduated. And so, the years went by and I finally turned 14. And it was finally time for me to go to the academy. And since I kept getting the highest grades during my years at school, I was able to easily get into the academy. 5. Chapter 33. 6 Years Later. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Now is the best time to become a Patreon since it is the beginning of the month. Ren, are you sure you are already taking everything you will need? asked my mother while keeping a worried look on her face. I am inside a caravan that will take me straight to the kingdom. Six years have passed since I was last there. 
I'm sure mom, you don't have to worry about it mom, I already said I'll be fine. I said to my mom trying to calm her down, even though I am 14 my mom still treats me like I am 8. I am grateful for the show of affection she always shows for me. But sometimes it proves to be quite inconvenient depending on the situation. Don't worry dear, Rin is an adult. He can take care of himself, my father said, trying his best to calm my mother's anxiety. While this was happening Anna was with her head down moving her little foot to the sides. Anna is currently 11 years old and I must say, my sister will surely be a beautiful woman when she becomes an adult. So I need to protect her from but influences that will surely try to get close to her. I squeezed my hand tightly while making this oath in my heart. What happened Anna? I asked Anna. As soon as she heard my voice, she sounded a little surprised probably thinking she wouldn't be called. Right then she raised her head towards me and said in a low voice. Are you leaving again Oni-chan? Anna asked with a sad countenance. With a smile on my face, I answer as softly as possible. I told you before that I would be going to the academy, right Anna? Anna just nodded. Besides it won't be forever. When you turn 14, we can see each other again. You just need to keep getting good grades in school. I said while trying to cheer Anna up, truth be told Anna was a pretty smart girl. Even before I started teaching her, she was already showing signs of being a genius. So when I started teaching her, she easily absorbed the things I taught her. I'm um, okay. Anna nodded her head while showing a gentle smile. After that I gave the front of the caravan two knocks indicating to the driver that he could go. As soon as the carriage started moving, I went away from my town. As soon as we passed through the gate. I started waving to my family who reciprocated the gesture by waving back. After that the caravan kept moving far enough away until my parents looked like three small dots on the horizon. And so I was on my way again to the kingdom of Solaris. The trip was pretty uneventful. We would stop at night to sleep and continue the next day. I had brought provisions for the entire trip to the kingdom. Once I got there I would head towards my home although I say home and a small set of lodgings that I will stay in until I go to school. Since I will be living in the school dormitory that is good enough for me for now. By the way I am going one week before the academy classes start. So I decided to go early to check out the store and how it is doing. The manager of my store who took care of all the processes so that I could come here without any problems. I really need to thank her when I meet her. With these thoughts in mind, I don't notice the noise outside. As soon as I look outside, I can see that there are several carriages trying to get in. Sorry about that, today there is a longer line than usual. This is probably because of the beginning of classes at the Academy of the Kingdom, said the coachman answering my question as to why there are so many carriages. We stayed almost three hours in line waiting our turn to pass. When finally, it was our turn to pass I noticed a commotion coming from behind. In a few seconds some riders appear. Everyone make way. The Viscount's son is passing, said the man who seemed to be the captain. He was wearing armor, and you could see a sword hanging from his waist. Without having a choice, everyone starts to give way to let the noble pass. Everyone including us. After a few seconds, a carriage passes right next to mine. It was quite luxurious and pompous. Through the window, I had a glimpse of a chubby boy. He also seems to have noticed me, but as soon as he looked at me, he made a frown and turned his attention to the front. Brat, although a vein appeared on my forehead thanks to the boy's attitude, I decided to ignore it, it wouldn't be worth creating a fuss over it, besides, although on the outside I am only 14 years old on the inside I am 34 years old, I wouldn't stoop to the level of a child, and finally, when the knights and the noblemen had left, we managed to get inside the kingdom, there were people walking everywhere buying things or talking to other people, I really like this atmosphere. It was very similar to the Tokyo I had seen on television in my past life. As soon as the caravan passed by my store I got out of the caravan and looked at my store after six long years. The front was completely full. The flow of customers seemed to be quite large. Not wanting to disturb anyone I decided to enter through the back, by the way. In the meantime of six years I created several other things to sell in my store. Such things ranged from soaps. Glasses and glass plates to spouts and pipes for water piping installations. Thanks to this the wells stopped being used completely two years ago. Most houses have piping where everyone can easily get water without having to leave home. My creations have also started to be imported to other countries. Thanks to this I probably have spending money for most of my life. 
4. Chapter 34. Hot Dog in Another World. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Now is the best time to become a Patreon since it is the beginning of the month. As soon as I opened the back door I passed through the back part of the store and went to the door that gave a view to the front of the store. Just as I had seen from the outside it was really crowded. You could see several customers buying plates or glasses. Not wanting to disturb you I decide to go to the second floor of the store. Going up the stairs I stop at the door that leads to the laboratory. By the way the part of medicines was also doing well. Over these six years Amy got a lot of recognition as a doctor. She even earned a nickname being called by many divine hands. The reason for this nickname is that all the medicines she makes are extremely effective. My fame as an ex also increased a lot in these six years. Amy also helped in this since all the credits she takes. She transfers to me saying that everything she knows I taught her. Putting these thoughts out of my head I knock twice on the door. You can come in. A voice came from inside. As soon as I opened the door, I was met by a girl in her mid-fifteens wearing a lab coat as she handled some cylinders with liquids inside. As soon as she turned to see who had entered, she was immediately surprised. Master, I didn't know you had already arrived, said Amy in surprise. Don't worry about it Amy. I entered through the back of the store since the front was too crowded. You are probably the only one who knows that I have arrived. By the way Amy occasionally called me master when we were alone. Do you know where Rebecca is? Hearing my question Amy put her hand on her chin and seemed to think about something for a few seconds. Oh that's right she told me to enter that to you in case you came here. After saying that Amy walked over to a drawer and opened it. After that she walked back again to where I was standing and held out her hand to me. What's this? I asked after seeing that Amy had a key in her hand. This is the key to the door of the lodge where you are staying master, Amy said with a smile. Um, did they really give that out even though the master hadn't arrived yet? I asked with a raised eyebrow. Hearing my question Amy put a hand behind her head as she looked embarrassed about something. Well. When they found out that the lodging was for one of the people in our store, they said it would be okay to give the key to someone else before the tenant arrived. Hearing Amy's response I was a little surprised. Is my influence that great? Pushing those thoughts out of my head I take the key and keep it in my pocket. Thanks for that. Anyway I will go to the lodge now. When Rebecca comes back tell her I stopped by. Hearing my words Amy put a hand on her head making a soldier pose and answered me with a smile on her face. Roger that master. After that I left the store and started walking towards the lodge. The location was pretty good since it was right in the middle of the gym and my store. It would take me about four minutes to get to the store or the gym. I walked through the streets feeling very nostalgic. It has been about six years since I was last here. I thought as I looked at the stores and stalls, it was quite busy as usual. Halfway there I stopped at a hot dog store and bought one. As soon as I took the hot dog in my hand the owner stared at me. I figured he was waiting for me to eat. But although I call it a hot dog this is nothing more than bread with sausage inside. As soon as I took a bite, I was a little disappointed. It wasn't bad but for me who knows the wonders of hot dogs from my past life this was the same as eating something and not tasting it. Something wrong son? The man asked. Huh. Oh no and nothing I just thought maybe this would be better if it had some sort of compliment. I said as I started to walk away. Thanks for that uncle. I said as I started to walk away from the man's tent. I might even be wrong but I think he started to mumble something after I left. After eating the hot dog. I had finally arrived at the lodge where I would stay until the academy classes started. The lodge is quite simple but I think the most notable thing was that it was using the glass that Henry and I had made. In fact almost all the stores are using it. As soon as I entered the lodge I was greeted by the receptionist. She was a young woman and wore a rather formal outfit. Good morning, what can I do for you? Asked the woman as soon as she saw me walk through the door. I must have a room rented here to stay for a week. Could you check it out for me please? Hearing my answer, the woman nodded while keeping a smile on her face. After that she picked up a book and began to leaf through it. Can you tell me your name please? Sure, my name is Rin. Hearing my answer, the woman continued leafing through the book until her hands stopped at a certain part. We have a room under Ren's name. 
After saying this the woman pointed to a staircase that probably led to the second floor. Please go up the stairs and look for the door that was with the number 7, that will be your room, said the woman without taking the smile off her face. I understand, thank you for your help. Saying this I climbed the stairs reaching a corridor. After that I went from door to door while trying to find the one with the plate number 7. My search did not take long. The penultimate door at the end of the corridor was with the plate number 7 indicating that that was my room. After that I opened the door and entered the room that would be my home for a week. 3. Chapter 35, Rebecca. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. The next day as soon as I woke up, I got ready and went towards my store. In the letter that Rebecca had sent me earlier she had said that she would help me buy the books and other materials that I would use at the academy. With this in mind I walked to my store and in a few minutes, you could already see the store along with a long line. This store is really busier than I thought. I think it is time to build another branch. Or maybe I will put into practice another plan I had in mind. After this, just like last time, I walked to the back of the store and entered through the back. Although I built this part of the back for fire, I didn't think I would use it this way. With that thought I walked up the stairs to the second floor. As soon as I reached the second floor I made my way to the door at the end of the hall. That was the store manager's door. If there was one place Rebecca would be it would surely be there. Knock knock. I knocked twice on the door. Just then a voice came from inside. You may enter. Doing as the voice said I opened the door and entered. As soon as I entered the room. I saw Rebecca sitting in her chair while she scribbled some papers. It is worth mentioning that her desk was so crowded with papers that I could hardly see her on the other side. I mentally thanked her for hiring Rebecca for the manager's job. Oh boss, Amy told me you arrived yesterday. I'm sorry I wasn't here to welcome you, Rebecca said as soon as she saw who had entered the room. Don't worry about it. As the store was quite busy yesterday and I had arrived a bit late I decided to rest first. Rebecca nodded as she kept a smile on her face. I see you are quite busy, if you want, I can come back another time. I said as I looked at the stack of papers that were on Rebecca's desk, she looked at the papers and showed an embarrassed smile on her face. Haha, sorry for that sight, I usually let some work accumulate to train Amy's brothers for when we open more branches. Rebecca said, actually what she said made sense. The best way to train a trainee and letting him do some of what will be his job in the future. So, how are the three of you doing? I asked curious about Amy's siblings. Hearing my question Rebecca put a hand to her chin thinking for a few seconds and then opened a smile making an okay with her hand. They are doing well, they absorb quickly what I teach. Rebecca said, although I don't know Amy's brothers well enough, I consider them as part of my family. I occasionally exchanged many letters with Amy as she always asked me for help about something I didn't know or know. Thanks to this I came to consider her a precious little sister to me, which is clearly ironic since she is one year older than me. Anyway, we can go, Dean, Fate, and Leo will take care of this paperwork in a few minutes, said Rebecca giving me a wink. After that and me and Rebecca left the back of the store and headed to the place where I would buy my books. It is worth remembering that although I will buy a reasonable amount of books for the classes I will not take all of them to class. Before coming here I had been researching about the academy and saw that you take three books of different subjects per day, which means that we will have 15 different subjects per week. So, where is the store where we are going to buy the books? In the letter you just told me that the store was run by a friend you made through connections with the store. I asked Rebecca as we walked. Hearing my question Rebecca turned with a smile on her face to me. She owns the largest bookstore in the capital. Even nobles kill themselves to have a chance to buy books from her as her books are of excellent quality. But unfortunately for them she only sells on commission. I was a little surprised to learn that she had made connections with such an important person. Are you sure it's okay for us to go unannounced? Hearing my question Rebecca looked at me with an amused face and let out a laugh. Ha 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 boss, although I already knew, you are really quite uninformed aren't you? I raised an eyebrow at Rebecca's question. What do you mean by that? Your store and one of the most popular in the capital and among the kingdoms, even royalty is no exception. Rebecca said with a smile, 
After this Rebecca and I continued walking for a few more minutes until we finally arrived at the bookstore that Rebecca was referring to. The library was huge and really gave off a majestic feeling. As soon as we entered the store several shelves with books were in front of me. There were several sections with several different types of books, as I looked around. I didn't realize that Rebecca and I had already reached the payment area until a voice came from the room. Why, it is rare that you come to visit me Rebecca. Besides, who is this cute child next to you? Hearing this voice, I turned to see who was the person who was talking. Sitting on a chair behind the counter was a beautiful woman. She had relatively long purple hair. She was wearing glasses on her face that was giving her an intellectual air. But no doubt the part of the woman that stood out the most were her breasts. They are huge. That was the only thing I could think of as I stared distractedly at the woman's breasts. Hello my dear readers, I'm here just to let you know that I have changed a little bit the schedule of how I will be posting my stories. I will be posting on the three sites three chapters per week. The days will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday in addition. On Patreon I will be posting a chapter a day from Monday to Friday instead of all only on Sundays. Well that's it. I hope you are enjoying the story. 3. Chapter 36. New Project. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Boss? I snap out of my daze just as Rebecca calls out in a low tone from my side. What, what happened? I asked confused. Rebecca looked at me and then at the girl who was talking to us as if confused but soon spoke. What are you doing? Introduce yourself. As soon as Rebecca said that I remembered why we came here. Oh, sorry about that. My name is Rin, and nice to meet you. I said being as respectful as possible. Well, you don't have to worry about the formalities. Anyway, assuming you are a friend of Rebecca's means you have some relationship with her, don't you? Hearing the woman's question Rebecca and I looked at each other for a few seconds, and with a smile I turned to the woman again. Well, you could say we are friends, besides Rebecca and the person I trust the most. Beside me I could see Rebecca with an embarrassed smile on her face. That's good to hear. Anyway, my name is Chise, I'm the person who runs this bookstore in the capital. But so what's the reason for you two coming here today? I doubt you came just to see me, Chise said. We both came here to buy some books for Rin. He will be attending the academy next week. As soon as the woman heard this Chai's was visibly surprised but soon a smile made itself present on her face. Um, does that mean you are a nobleman? Chai's asked. Her question was actually quite normal. Most of the children who go to the academy are mostly nobles. And the commoners who go usually need to prove their ability in order to join. Ha ha ha, not at all. I'm just an ordinary commoner. I said while smiling. That is even more surprising. Anyway, since you are going to the academy, I will help you with the books since Rebecca is an old friend of mine. I am quite used to the books used by the academy since most of the noble children buy the books from me. After that, Chai's guided us through her library while she picked up books for me. The books were of the most diverse subjects ranging from mathematics to military tactics. After we got all the books, Rebecca paid for all of them, and we were ready to leave. Thank you for your help, Chai's, Rebecca said. Oh, you don't need to thank me. Business is business leaving friendship aside, Chai said with a smile. After that, Rebecca and I left the store. After a few minutes walking, we arrived at the part where we were going to part. I was in front of my temporary home while Rebecca would continue on to get back to the store. Rebecca, can you get everyone together tomorrow? I have a new idea in mind and wanted to share it with everyone. Hearing my words, Rebecca nodded her head. Sure, boss. After this exchange Rebecca and I parted ways, as soon as I got to my room, I started looking at the contents of the books I was going to study to get an idea of what I could learn. But looking at the books I realized that some things were at the elementary level while others were at the high school level. In short there was nothing I didn't know. But that wasn't so important. My focus was on the prestige I would gain by graduating from the academy. With this thought in mind, I fell asleep. The next day as soon as I woke up, I headed towards my store. As today the store would be closed it would be the ideal time for us to have a meeting. It took a few minutes to get to my store. In general the store is quite close to where I am staying which is a good thing for me. As soon as I arrived at the store, I entered the front door using a special key and headed up to the second floor. As I approached Rebecca's room, 
I heard voices coming from inside, without wasting any time. I open the door and soon I am greeted by everyone. Oh, Ren, you finally arrived. Bernard said in the room were Henry, Rebecca, Bernard, Aria, Amy and her three brothers, although I didn't know the reason Amy's brothers were here. I assumed there was some reason since Rebecca brought them. Sorry for the delay and thank you all for coming, I said with a smile on my face. Ha ha ha, you don't have to worry about that. This meeting was smelling money to me. I wouldn't miss this chance at all, Arya said with a smile. I let out a wry smile at Arya's comment. I could see that the others were the same way. Well, you're not entirely wrong. Hearing my response Arya's smile got even bigger. Well, and we better start the meeting right away. I'm sure you guys are busy and still agreed to come here even though it was sudden. I really appreciate that. After saying that I went to each of the people in the room and handed them a paper. After handing the paper to everyone I indicated that they could open it, and after that a smile made itself present on my face after witnessing everyone's reaction. Rin. I knew you were smart, but still, this totally exceeded my expectations, said Arya. I could see that everyone else was having similar reactions. That and a fantastic idea. If this comes to fruition the profits, we will gain will be extremely vast, Bernard said with a huge smile on his face. This is definitely an ambitious idea. I guess I should expect no less from you, boss. Rebecca said, hearing everyone's excitement a smile comes to my face. I am happy that everyone is seeing what I was seeing. Actually the reason I want to do this even though I know the huge expense is because I have my memories of my past life. So I know this is a business that has a high chance of success. With that I also look at the paper that was in my hand. More specifically at the area where it was written shopping mall construction project this was a project that had been in my mind for some time. It was time to turn it into reality. Hello my dear readers, I'm here just to let you know that I have changed a little bit the schedule of how I will be posting my stories. I will be posting on the three sites three chapters per week. The days will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday in addition. On Patreon I will be posting a chapter a day from Monday to Friday instead of all only on Sundays. Well that's it, I hope you are enjoying the story. 3. Chapter 37, Entry Ceremony If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. After presenting my new future project to everyone the days went by, and this time all I did was meet with the others to finish some unfinished details. Arya and Bernard would take care of all the construction process and purchase of land to build the mall. By our estimates the mall should be ready within a year and a half. Besides the normal products that I already sell in my store I also intend to sell several other things. From candy and food stores that only existed in my old world to clothes using materials that people here have never seen. But even if I wanted to do this it will probably take some time. First for the clothes we will have the material problems. My plan was to make clothes out of cotton but unfortunately as the country of Solaris is a country that is cold most of the time this will make it very difficult to grow them. Although there is a simple method to get around this which would be by building greenhouses the problem still persists for. One simple fact. I am not a nobleman. The fact is, I don't have land that I can handle the way I want to, so I decided to postpone for the time being the plan of making cotton. About the food and sweets although I want to make sweets would be easier. The main reason for this is that sweets in general take ingredients that are relatively easy to access in this world. HAA. I wonder if there isn't an easier way to solve this problem. I said as I walked through the streets of the capital. I was heading to the academy to start the entrance ceremony. Originally everyone tried to make me take a carriage to the academy but I managed to convince them that I wanted to walk as I couldn't go to school in my past life. I am quite excited this time. After a few minutes walking I finally arrived at the academy's facilities. It was an extremely large place with a beautiful garden as far as the eye could see. At the end of this garden, you could see a huge building extremely beautiful. The windows were all with the glass I made so that made me happy. Several carriages were arriving and dropping off several noble children who would also be attending the academy. There were also some children walking which I interpreted to be commoners just like me, all without exception were wearing the clothes provided by the academy, the boys consisting of black pants, with a shirt and vest, 
while the girls the only difference being the skirt instead of pants. Getting these thoughts out of my head I finally entered the academy premises. Everyone must have received a note along with their uniform. The note said that as soon as we arrived, we should go to the auditorium where the entrance ceremony would take place. So I assumed that everyone was going to the same place. While walking through the academy's facilities I looked at the place with admiration. It was a truly beautiful place. Without realizing I arrived in front of a huge building. There were several students entering so I assumed that was the auditorium. Following the flow I decided to enter too. As soon as I entered, I noticed that almost all the seats were occupied. The front seats seemed to be filled by the nobles while the commoners were sitting in the back. Going with the flow I sat in the back in one of the chairs that were available. Is the seat next to you available? As I was sitting down a voice coming from behind me catches my attention. As soon as I turned my face, I saw a young man with orange hair and black eyes standing behind me. It's vacant, you can sit down if you like, I said. With that the young man sat down next to me and then turned to me. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Eric. My family owns a flower shop here in the capital. Eric said introducing himself. And a pleasure. My name is Rin. My family lives a little far from here but we also run a store here in the capital. Hearing my words Eric looked a little surprised. Who? It's rare for a family to have a store in the capital even if they live far away. Well, you must have your reasons. Said Eric, honestly, I was glad he didn't go deeper into it. It would be a pain in the ass to explain everything. While we were thinking about it again a voice came from behind us. Eric, I can't believe you didn't really wait for me. Hearing this voice Eric and I turned around. Behind us was a girl with black hair and eyes. Gay Flora. From my side Eric made a strange noise as he contorted his face in a funny way. While wondering what their relationship could be the conversation suddenly turned to me. Hello, my name is Flora. I am the childhood friend of this idiot here. Said Flora while pointing at Eric. Hey, who's the idiot? Who else seriously? As far as I know I wasn't the one who got into school with scraping grades. What, you didn't do so well either. We both got almost the same grade. Didon compare me to you. Looking at Eric and Flora's funny situation I remember that we actually took a test before we were officially accepted into the academy. Although they didn't announce the results, I wonder how they know their grades, ignoring this fact and possible to hear several people mumbling things around. Hey, did you hear? I heard that Princess Emmy and Prince Eric will be attending the academy this year too. That and true? That will be wonderful. Surely we need to be friends with the princess and the prince. Speaking of which, I wonder who will be chosen to be her highness fiancé. I'm curious about that too, but surely it will be a prince from some neighboring country. I am puzzled when the conversation stops at a part one didn't expect to hear. Fiancé? Is Princess Emmy getting married? I mean, I know this is normal at this time of year but isn't it a bit early? With this in mind I am lost in thought. Meanwhile a man walks on stage starting the entrance ceremony. My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 4. Chapter 38 Speech If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. It is a pleasure to see all of you today at the entrance ceremony. Saying this the principal began to explain the basic workings of the academy. All students will have access to the cafeteria where they can have two meals a day in addition to afternoon snacks. He also gave the class schedule and also said that in the academy the most important thing is your grades. Your class would also be determined by your grades. The classes are D, C, B, A1 and A2. Although I don't know why I heard some people saying that class A2 is inferior to class A1. Not that it matters to me. Now we will have a word from the two students who had the highest scores on the academy entrance test. Please Princess Emmy and Rin, take the stage. As various thoughts went through my head, I didn't hear what the principal was saying. Hey man, they are calling you. I was woken up by Eric who was standing next to me rocking me. As soon as I looked around, I noticed that there were several people looking around while others were whispering. He has no last name. A commoner managed to get a grade similar to Princess Emmy? Those were the conversations that could be heard. As soon as I looked at the stage again, I noticed that the princess was already walking towards the stage. 
Her walk was extremely graceful and the air around her made people want to approach her. Her beautiful white hair was swaying gently in the wind. That was a sight hard to forget. Putting that thought out of my mind I turned to Eric and thank him. Thanks for letting me know man. I was thinking about something else and didn't realize. Hearing my response Eric puts a smile on his face. No problem. The commoners need to help themselves. And like Eric said, said Flora standing next to Eric. With a smile on my face, I stood up from my chair drawing the attention of all the people in the auditorium who started to stare at me. After that I started walking towards the stage. As I walked, I could hear several mumbles from the other children. He and the commoner who got a high score just like Emi Sama? He should know his place. Conversations like that were heard here and there, yet I decided not to pay attention to it and moved on. It's not like I could do anything to change the way people see me anyway. Once I was up in the auditorium I bowed to the princess and stood beside her. And a pleasure to see you again. I was surprised when I heard a voice coming from my side. As soon as I looked in the direction where the voice had come from, I realized that the princess was looking at me sideways. As always, her expression was dull and could even be said to be cold. What a fright, I didn't think she would talk to me. Getting these thoughts out of my head I answered the princess. It is an honor that your highness remembers me. I was genuinely surprised that she remembered me. I mean, she's a princess. She probably sees dozens of people a day. Although since she knows my identity it's probably hard to forget someone who brings one revolutionary invention after another. After that the director turned to the two of us and stepped aside leaving the microphone alone. At that time I understood that he wanted one of the two of us to make a speech. Your Highness I wonder if you could make the speech for both of us. I've never done something like this before so I'm afraid I might do something wrong. Hearing my words, she nodded and slowly began to move towards the huge microphone. Every step she took you could see the delicacy. In case you are wondering about the microphone it is something made in my company. Although I call it a microphone it is known as an amplifier. To tell the truth all it does is make your voice a little louder so people still need to be quiet to be able to hear. As soon as the princess approached the microphone, she began to say her speech. I want to thank first of all the counselors and teachers of the academy. Today will be a day that will be remembered in the future in the history of the kingdom. Several children who are here one day will help in the development of the country. Be it commoner or noble I hope that each one gives his best and live his life to the fullest. As soon as the princess finished her speech a round of applause could be heard as the princess returned to my side. That was a beautiful speech your highness, I said as soon as she approached. Thank you. That was all she said before she turned forward again. Hmm? Why the delay? My thoughts were interrupted by the principal's voice. Now all students present will go to their respective dormitories. Tomorrow morning you will be able to see your class on the bulletin board. After saying that all the students started to get up each following their own course. As soon as the princess started walking, I decided to walk after her. I really didn't know if it would be rude to leave the place before the princess so I decided to wait. Just as we came down the step and were getting ready to leave a voice caught both my and Emmy's attention. Princess Emmy, and a pleasure sailing this fine morning, I must say you are getting more beautiful every time we meet. I looked momentarily at the princess and saw at a glance that there was a slight frown on her face. However, as soon as she turned around, she had a smile on her face. But, how? Shall I put it? Her smile seemed forced. At least that's what I was feeling as I looked at her. Prince Edward, it is a pleasure to see you again after so long. My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 5. Chapter 39. Confrontation. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. An extremely uncomfortable situation was unfolding in front of me. Apparently an acquaintance of the princess arrived to greet her but clearly, she doesn't like him. Moreover, I don't know why. This guy. He seems to look at the princess as if he is looking at an object on display. While I was thinking about this, I noticed that the prince looked at me. But then immediately turned to the princess again. I felt that to him it seemed like I wasn't even here. Well, have you decided on the matter we talked about between our families earlier? As soon as he said this, 
I noticed that the princess's face contracted into an almost imperceptible scowl. I thought I had told you before Prince Edward, at the moment I do not intend to marry. Hearing the princess's response, the prince flashed a smile that was clearly fake before continuing speaking. Well, everything is possible in the future, you know, we are royal family. I am sure your majesty knows that a marriage between the two of us will be extremely beneficial for your kingdom, he said with a smile. I felt a little uncomfortable with his comment. He was clearly saying that it would be beneficial if both of us were to marry since our country would have help from a stronger country. I looked at the princess and also noticed that she didn't like the comment that much. With a smile on his face the prince began to approach the princess. To be honest his attitude was getting on my nerves. He totally treats her like an object and thinks he has possession of her. I thought as I looked at him, he was totally ignoring me. I'm sure she could do something to push him away but I can't just stand by and watch. Without a second thought I start walking towards the princess and the prince. The princess seemed to notice that I was approaching as I felt her eyes on me. But just as I thought the prince was not at all interested in me. Just before he puts his hand on the princess, I step in front of her stopping the prince's advance. Would you please refrain from doing that prince? From what I can see the princess clearly doesn't want to go with you. Hearing my reply he stopped, although he still had a smile on his face. I was sure he was not smiling. A commoner thinks he has the right to talk to me the crown prince of the kingdom of Storm. Saying this he moved closer to my ear and whispered so that only I could hear. Know your place commoner, before I force you to. He said in a clear tone of threat. Unfortunately for him this would not affect me. In these six years many things happened including the fact that the kingdom of Storm tried in every way to lure me into their kingdom, but I denied all possibilities and said I would stay in the kingdom of Solaris. Basically I was confident that if I revealed my identity, they would have one foot back from messing with me. My name has become extremely well known these past six years, although most people still don't know my face. The few who do are the royal family of Solaris and the high-ranking people who work in my company. The princess also knew this so she was not so alarmed about it. I apologize for bothering you prince, but I'm sure you don't want to be known as someone who forces girls to do something they don't want to do you. I said threatening him back, he clearly understood my message, being the target of rumors being someone in royalty is extremely bad for one's reputation. Even more so if the person in question is the crown prince. With a smile on his face the prince took a step back, apparently, he understood what I meant. Oops, sorry about that. It seems I was too emotional seeing Princess Emmy after so long that I ended up letting my emotions control me. He said turning around immediately afterwards. Well, I hope we meet again Princess Emmy. Preferably when you have no nuisances around. He said as he looked sideways at me. After that he started walking towards the exit of the auditorium. With a sigh I turned to the princess. Our eyes met as she was looking at me. Her beautiful golden eyes seemed to be mesmerizing me. Something wrong? She said apparently. I was looking too hard. It's nothing. Sorry for my intrusion princess. I just couldn't stand by watching how disrespectful he was being towards you. I said as I shook my hand. And true I was quite famous but that doesn't mean I could do anything to change the situation. He was still a prince from a stronger country than Solaris. I only got away with it this time because I could use a card against him. While I was thinking about this Emmy did something I really didn't expect to see, she smiled softly at me. You don't have to worry about it, I really appreciate your help, that was very gentlemanly of you but it could have been dangerous so I urge you to be more careful in the future, she said scolding me. Also, you can call me Emmy, we are in school so we both have the same student status, she said I was really surprised by her request. Although it's not really weird to call someone by name this doesn't apply to royalty. Her letting me use her name, and the same as saying we are close friends. Are you sure? She just nodded. Then. Emmy, may I escort you to your dormitory? Although my request was a bit cheeky for some reason something told me she wouldn't reject it. Thinking for a moment she nodded her head accepting my proposal. I would love to, she said. With that, Emmy and I walked out of the auditorium heading towards the girl's dorm. My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 5. Chapter 40. Visit to the Cafeteria. If you like my work and want to support me, 
consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. As we walked along Emmy and I were talking about various things, I was quite excited since this was the first time we had spoken properly. Plus I must mention, Emmy who was already beautiful became incredibly beautiful. She really looked like a goddess who had descended to the mortal plane. In the meantime while we were talking, I confirmed a few things about Emmy that I had suspected for a long time. Although Emmy looks incredibly inexpressive, she actually expresses herself a lot with actions. This makes her extremely cute. So, how's your store going? Emmy asked still with her inexpressive face. Another thing I noticed about Emmy is that she is a person who is extremely fascinated with technology. This makes her sometimes act out of character when she is excited about something. It's going well. We are planning to do something big in the future but for now I have only given the concept to the people who will be involved in the project. But I intend to do several things that I have been thinking about. Hearing my answer I could see the small gleam in Emmy's golden eyes. She really was fascinated by this kind of subject. Do you want to talk about it later? I asked with some hope. Although I know she is only interested in the new information I will give her I still want to think it will be a time when we can talk for a while. Hearing my question Emmy stared at me for a few seconds before answering. I would love to. What do you think about us meeting at the palace this weekend? Hearing her answer, I was surprised. Initially I thought we would simply eat something in the academy cafeteria and chat. Are you sure about that? I asked a little wary. Not that I didn't like the idea and just that going to the palace was something strangely out of the ordinary for me. When we had something store related to resolve that needed the palace's permission usually the one who would go in my place would be Rebecca or Aria. Yes, I'm sure my parents would also love to see you again. She said starting to walk right away. Was this really okay? I mean, she is a princess. Is it so normal that I go to the palace like this? Or is it because she considers me someone special? Putting these thoughts out of my mind I run to catch up with Emmy who is walking a little ahead. We are here, said Emmy as soon as I approached. When I looked where she was looking, I realized that we had already arrived at the women's dormitory. The building was quite nice with a huge garden at the entrance. It was a pleasure to have the opportunity to accompany you princess, I said, although she allowed me to call her by name. I feel it would be awkward to call her at this point. Still expressionless she just looked at me for a few seconds before entering the dormitory. Well I guess now it's time to go see who my roommate will be. I said turning around and then headed towards my dorm. The female and male dorms were relatively close to each other so I basically had to walk for about three minutes before I got to the male dorm. The entrance was very similar to the girls dorm so I simply ignored this part. As soon as I entered. I saw that the place was quite nice and immediately went to the stairs leading to the second floor. As soon as I reached the front of the room to which I was assigned I opened the door and was surprised to see that there was already someone inside. Oh, then we'll be roommates and a pleasure in. Eric said as he pointed his hand in my direction. Without a second thought I accepted his handshake and put a smile on my face. I'm glad you are my roommate Eric. After the introduction I started looking at the room. It was a relatively spacious room so it was easily enough for two people to stay in it. After I finished packing up Eric and I decided to check out the cafeteria while we took our time to eat. After we left the dorm, we started walking towards the cafeteria. As it was between the male and female dorms it was pretty fast to get there. It probably wouldn't take us two minutes. As soon as we got to the dining hall, we entered it while we were anxious to see the types of food that were served. The place was quite crowded showing that several people had the same idea as the two of us. As we walked to the we noticed the black hairdresser among the people waiting in line. It also seemed that she had noticed us. Oh Rin Eric did you guys come to eat too? Said Flora waving at us. Hello Flora. And a pleasure sailing again. I said as soon as we approached. After that the three of us waited in line until it was our turn. Which didn't take long and soon it was time to choose the food. The menu was quite varied and there were several foods that commoners normally couldn't eat. There were also some foods that you had to pay to eat, but they were practically premium which didn't change the fact that they were more delicious than usual. But really, this world still lacks a lot of balanced nutrition and more varied foods. I thought as I looked at my plate. Iron, if you don't hurry, we will leave you behind. I snap out of my daze at Eric's voice. 
Oh, sorry about that. I was thinking about some things. After that the three of us walked to a part that was relatively empty and sat down. As I looked around it was obvious the distinction that had been created. Basically commoners and nobles did not sit together. While I was thinking about this, I heard some shouting coming from the entrance of the dining hall. As I turned to face the direction of the shouts, I noticed that Emmy had come to the dining hall as well. But soon my smile turned to a scowl when I noticed who was standing next to her. My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 5. Chapter 41. Revelation. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Prince Edward. I said his name in my mind as I saw along with Emmy. Several mumbles could be heard as people began to notice that Emmy was with Prince Edward. Their relationship, and so close for them to come along to the dining hall? Said a female voice that I couldn't identify where it was coming from. That just proves that both of them will probably be husband and wife in the future, doesn't it? Said another voice. Ren, are you okay? Flora asked noticing the frown on my face. No and nothing, thanks for asking. I replied going back to business as usual. I don't think this is the time to create any confusion. My friends and I decided to ignore the commotion and started to eat. But no matter how hard I tried to ignore it from time to time I still looked at Emmy worried that something might go wrong. My first impression of Prince Edward was not that good. While we were eating, we heard some commotion forming for some unknown reason. What's going on? Eric asked. You mean besides the prince and princess being here? Answered Flora Riley. Hearing what Flora just said Eric looked at Flora with a scowl on his face but was ignored by her. While they were both at it a voice made itself present in the room. I wonder if I could sit with you. As soon as we looked at the owner of the voice all three of us were surprised. But I must say that Flora and Eric were much more surprised than I was. P Princess Flora? Eric said in shock. Flora was simply looking at Emmy with her mouth open. She probably didn't know what to say. Although I was a little uncomfortable with it a little further away, I saw that Prince Edward was looking at us with uninviting eyes. See clear, I said stammering. Damn, that sounded so stupid. Hearing my words Emmy sat down next to me and soon began to gracefully eat her food. Why next to me? I asked myself as I looked sideways at her. When I looked at Eric and Flora, I realized they both had a strange expression on their faces. What is it? I asked, hearing my question. They both looked at each other and soon turned to me but still continued to look at Emmy sideways. You too. Have you by any chance met before you joined the academy? Flora asked. The question took me by surprise for a moment. After all I don't remember seeming that close to Emmy. Looking at Eric I realized that he was having the same doubt as Flora. Hearing the question Emmy stopped eating and turned to me. I think she was asking if she could tell. Looking again at Flora and Eric. I thought for a few seconds before turning my attention back to Emmy again waving to her. I decided I would tell them at least some things. They seem like nice people anyway. We first saw each other when we were eight years old. Emmy said, leaving both Eric and Flora surprised. A few things happened that made me go to the palace. That occasion I had the pleasure of meeting the royal family. I said adding to Emmy's response. They seemed surprised by this and looked at me with clear doubt in their eyes. Ren. Who are you really? Eric asked. Did you hear something about the queen being sick eight years ago? I asked, hearing my question. They both nodded. Almost the whole kingdom knows. We also know that she was cured by some innovative method, Flora said. Well, I am the person who healed the queen. As soon as I said that I could see the expressions of surprise stamped on Eric and Flora's faces. Not believing it they both turned their faces towards Emmy trying to verify the veracity of what I just said. Emmy just nodded her head showing that I was telling the truth. But wasn't the one who cured the queen the genius inventor X? Eric asked. I just gave a wry smile and answered his question. Well, nice to meet you. Hearing my answer, they both abruptly stood up from their chair looking at me dumbfounded. I felt uncomfortable with their attitude but decided not to say anything. Are you really serious? Flora asked euphorically. Why are you so happy? I asked confused. I mean, if you and X, doesn't that mean you and Dr. Emmy's master? Flora asked with her eyes shining. 
While all this was going on I noticed that Emmy was quietly eating her food. Plus I also noticed that we were getting quite a bit of attention, including from the prince who had sat at a table not far from us and seemed to be watching us. Hey Flora, calm down, you're attracting too much attention. I said as I looked around. Once they both calmed down and sat down, I sighed thinking about the overreaction of both of them. I really didn't know I was that famous. While it's true that I am Amy's master it's not like I taught her everything. I taught her basic knowledge about various things and from then on she did everything on her own. But why did your attitude change so suddenly when referring to Amy? Are you a fan of hers or something? Hearing my questions Flora seemed to be embarrassed by her previous attitude but still answered. Well, I want to become a doctor when I graduate. And almost everyone who is interested in that field sees Amy as an idol. She said with a passionate look on her face. I thought Flora's answer was funny. But I didn't say anything. Well, in case you wanted to, I can introduce you to her sometime. Hearing my words Flora stood up again as she looked at me with glowing eyes. Really? She asked. Why yes. I replied a little surprised at Flora's sudden burst of energy. As this was happening, we heard a small giggle coming from our side. Fufufu, you three seem to be good friends, said Emmy as she looked at us with a soft smile on her face. My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 5. Chapter 42, Advanced Class If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Well, I guess so. I replied clumsily. I have had enough friends but they never reached the level where I could easily say we were best friends. After that the four of us continued to eat in a warm and cozy atmosphere. Although Eric and Flora were reluctant at first, they both quickly got used to Emmy's presence. From time to time I glanced in Prince Edward's direction and almost every time our eyes met it seemed as if he would jump down from his table at any moment to strangle me. But still I decided not to mind this and ignored him most of the time. The next day classes would finally start. Eric was finishing getting the books for today's subjects while I waited for him in the lobby. But unexpectedly Eric likes to wake up early. So it's not like we were late or anything. Okay, I think I got everything. Eric said approaching me. I nodded and soon Eric and I left the men's dormitory heading towards the main building where the classes would take place. It is worth mentioning that Eric and I are not in the same class. After all, the class I am in was made especially for the best students in the school. I said goodbye to Eric as soon as we got to his classroom. Looking through the gap in the open door I saw that Flora was in the same class as him. Flora noticing me waved at me and I waved back. After that I went towards my classroom. After a few minutes walking I finally arrived at my classroom. Man, they really don't mind showing preference. I said as I looked at the door, I mean, that's made of gold isn't it? I touched the door to see if it was really gold, although I am not an expert. I have read several books in my past life on how to identify if certain gems are real or not. And this is truly made of gold. Is something wrong? I was suddenly surprised by a voice coming from behind me. As soon as I looked back, I saw Emmy looking at me with curious eyes. Ah, yes. I'm fine. I was just a little anxious. After all it seems unreal that a commoner like me managed to not only get into the Solaris Academy, but also into the advanced class. The advanced class was the class I would be attending, in short, a class made for geniuses. The standard number of students in each class is around 30 to 35. The advanced class barely holds 10. In an academy with over 15,000 students this class inevitably draws attention. And I was one of the privileged ones in this class. You don't have to worry about that. You're more than worthy of being in this class, besides. I'm really happy that we can study together. I really admire you. Not only for the fact that you saved my mother, but also for the fact that your inventions help a lot in the everyday life of ordinary people. I was speechless upon hearing Emmy's words. In fact, at this very moment, she is doing something quite different from her usual cold expression. But more than that, being recognized by the person you love really makes you happy. It's an honor to know that you feel that way about me, Alti. Emmy, I said with a smile on my face. Emmy looked at me momentarily with a surprised expression, but soon a smile made its way onto her face. 
That was probably the most beautiful smile I had ever seen. This princess again was doing things that surprised me one after another. After that Emmy and I entered the room attracting the attention of everyone inside. Just as I expected there were only eight students in the room. Besides, I doubt very much that others would come later because they would be late. As I walked towards my seat in the middle, I glanced at some of the students, all of whom had very different characteristics from each other, as I sat down. I looked around again and noticed that the others were also looking at me curiously. Strangely enough I didn't feel hostility, or anything like that. They really seemed to only be curious about me. As I looked around, I noticed that there was movement next to me, when I looked to see who had sat down. I was relatively surprised to see Emmy next to me. She was sitting next to me? I thought as I tried to understand the situation, but my thoughts were stopped when I heard the sound of the door opening. It seems that the person in charge of our class had arrived. Oh, looks like everyone has arrived, that's good, said the woman. After that she takes a pen and walks over to the blackboard to start writing. Speaking of which both the pen and the blackboard came from my company. Although they are similar to the ones they had in my old world they are still not perfect and are in constant process of improvement. After all, it's not as if we had all the materials we had on earth. Sometimes improvisation is necessary. After that the woman started writing some things on the board and then turned to the whole room. And a pleasure to meet you. My name is Susie Harvest Solaris. I am the teacher in charge of teaching you all. The woman said with a smile. Looking around I saw that everyone was looking at her with admiration as if she was an idol. I didn't really know her so I didn't know how to feel. Noticing my confused face Emmy next to me begins to give a brief introduction of the woman who was the object of admiration. She and quite a famous person on the continent. They call her the genius of the century. She has launched several famous theories. Although she has not yet been able to prove most of them many people assume her theories to be true. Emmy said, One of her most famous theories is that there is a force invisible to the naked eye that holds us to the ground. Emmy said, surprising me. She's talking about gravity, isn't she? My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 6. Chapter 43. Combat Class. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. Are you interested in the subject? Asked Emmy next to me. I think she understood my silence as interest in the subject. To tell you the truth I already know the answer to this theory. But I don't think it would be good to meddle in other people's discoveries. At most an assistance could help. Well, I admit that it did intrigue me a bit. I said as I looked with interest at the teacher. If you want, I can introduce you to her. Emmy said as she stood next to me. Having no reason to reject I decided to accept Emmy's suggestion with a smile. I would be extremely grateful if you could do that for me. But I don't know if I will be able to repay that debt, if you have something you want. Please don't hesitate to tell me, I said with a small smile on my face. You don't have to worry about that, you saved my mother's life, Emmy said with a smile. Hearing Emmy's words a small smile came to my face. The two of us had grown quite close compared to before. Again I looked at the teacher as an amused thought surrounded my head. I wonder if she is the Albert Einstein of this world. While I was thinking about this Susie took out some papers and started handing them out to the students. All right, let's conduct a little test to find out how far the extent of your academic abilities go. Susie said as soon as she finished handing out the papers. You have one hour and thirty minutes to finish. Whoever finishes first can come deliver the test. She said sitting down in her chair. You can start now. As soon as she said that everyone turned their sheets over and started taking the test. Looking at the questions there was nothing that difficult. I would say half of the questions are at elementary school level, while the other half are at high school level. With this in mind I started solving the questions one by one. And as soon as 30 minutes had passed, I had finished my test. I got up from my chair and started walking towards Susie who was looking at me with a surprised face. Looking around I see that the others were also looking at me the same way. Are you done yet? Susie asked. I just nodded and handed over my sheet with the answers. All right, you can sit down now. As soon as she said that I went back to my seat and waited for the others to finish. Ten minutes later Emmy was the second to turn in her test, 
and so all the students began to turn in their tests as time went on. All right, now that everyone has turned in their tests you can follow the schedule and go to your other classes. Susie said collecting all the tests. After that we all left the room and walked towards our other classes. As I understand the men will go to the combat class while the women will go to the etiquette class. As soon as we arrived in the room, I saw that there were already several people there. It seems that we were the last ones to arrive. Besides, it seems that we are attracting a lot of attention. While looking around I noticed a person raising his hand and waving at me. Yiren, here, Eric said as he shouted. Dude, can't you be a little less loud? I asked as soon as I approached him. Ha ha ha, sorry about that. I was really looking forward to this class. My dream and become a soldier after all. Eric said as his eyes sparkled, I really don't know how to feel about this class. Besides not liking violence very much I've never been in a situation where I had to fight. Although I've read many martial arts books, I've never really practiced them. Although I have the theory, I don't have the practice. While I was thinking about this a burly man came into the room. We were in which was actually quite similar to a dojo. I figured he was our teacher. All right, I can see that everyone has arrived. Since I'm not much for theory we will learn by doing. First I want you all to take a weapon from the arsenal that you think best suits you. Also, my name is Mark, and from today I will be your combat instructor. Mark said, after that all the students began to pick up the weapons that best suited their battle style. Some picked up bows, others picked up spears, and there were even those who picked up axes. I think this will do, I said as I looked at the sword in my hand. I didn't take the sword because it was better with it or something. I simply took the sword because it seemed the easiest to use. All right, now I want you guys to find a pair. Mark said, obviously Eric and I paired up for this training. Are you ready, Ren? I don't intend to take it easy. Eric said as he positioned himself for battle. He had also picked up a sword. Besides, all the weapons are wooden so we will probably only come out with minor injuries. Well, I guess it's time to test my martial arts skills. I thought as a smile made its way across my face. After that Eric and I began to fight each other. We were both complete amateurs so our fighting wasn't the most lethal or sophisticated. But it was enough for me to know how well I could fight. I knew the theory behind the various martial arts from my old world like judo, boxing, karate, jiu-jitsu among others. Thanks to this while holding a sword I was inventing various new techniques that suited the use of the sword. Another thing I could notice while Eric and I were fighting is that compared to the techniques from my world the ones from this world have no finesse at all. In other words, the techniques of this world are very crude and not subtle at all. Thanks to this I was doing much better than I would have originally. My Discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 3. Chapter 44. Clyde Elklid Storm. Next. If you like my work and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon. Besides several chapters ahead of the public, you will also be helping me get closer to my dream of being a full-time writer. In a kingdom near the kingdom of Solaris there was a man sitting on a throne while his expression was not good at all. This man was the king of the kingdom of Storm. his name was Clyde Elklid Storm. In front of him was a kneeling man who had come to deliver the news about a request he had made. They denied it again your majesty. They said they do not intend to migrate to another kingdom either now or in the future. But they also said they were open to international business, said the kneeling man. When the kneeling man looked into the king's face he froze on the spot. His expression was not good at all. You could see the veins on his forehead showing how much anger he was feeling at that moment. Are you telling me that they dare to refuse again the generous offer of my brilliant kingdom? The king asked. Yes, your majesty, said the kneeling man. As soon as he heard the servant's confirmation the king became even more possessed and threw to the ground the glass cup he was using to drink wine. Bunch of useless, you can't even do a task as simple as bringing a small store to our kingdom, said the king as he shouted. However, the reason for the king's anger was meaningless. Although Ren's store is really small the monetary influence his store has and more than enough to make other kings look at X as a formidable traitor that they should not take so lightly. But unfortunately Clyde Elklid Storm could not see the truth. Since he was a child, he always had everything, as being an only son since he was young. He was trained to be the crown prince, 
At some point he thought it was natural for everything to be his and for him to own everything. Because for him this was the will of heaven, slowly calming down Clyde continued. And my son? Surely he must have good news, Clyde asked. He has arrived without any problems in the realm of Solaris. Besides, he also said that he has a brilliant plan in mind and will soon discover the true identity of X, said the man who was kneeling. As soon as he heard such news Clyde could not contain his excitement. Oh, as expected of my son, he truly is the heir to the great kingdom of Storm. However, even if Clyde was happy there was no way he could have known that Edward's brilliant plan would simply be to use his authority as crown prince of Storm to try to talk to X. In Edward's view Solaris is a vassal kingdom, so they won't stop him from meeting X as long as he reveals his identity. We need to get our hands on that technology anyway. We can't let Solaris have something we don't have, Clyde said. His face was far from looking like that of someone from royalty. After the combat class a few days had passed, the time passed relatively smoothly without incident. Prince Edward really didn't like me although he didn't show it in public. As today was the weekend we wouldn't have a class. With that in mind Emmy made me keep my promise to go to the castle. I had no idea why we were going there but honestly, I didn't care that much. If I could spend some more time with her that would be enough for me. The carriage swayed as I looked out the window at all the citizens going about their daily business. As the carriage we were in didn't have the royal family symbol on it people probably thought we were simply noblemen going somewhere. In a short time, we arrived at the castle. Even after six years it was still incredibly beautiful. As soon as we arrived at the entrance of the castle Emmy and I entered while being guided by a maid. As soon as we reached a certain part of the castle Emmy suddenly stopped causing us to look at her. I will go to my room to change clothes. Please take him to my mother. Hearing Emmy's words the maid bowed. As you wish your highness, said the maid with an expressionless face. As Emmy walked gracefully down the hallway, I couldn't help but think that I was passing by Emmy's room. In my past life I had never left the hospital so I had never been to a girl's room, which made me somewhat curious to think what Emmy's room would be like. After separating from Emmy, I followed the maid in silence. We walked for a few minutes through the castle until we reached a door where there were two guards standing outside. Please let his majesty know that Mr. Wren has arrived, said the maid leaving me momentarily surprised. Why out of the blue is she being so formal with me? I thought as I looked at the maid. While my thoughts were elsewhere one of the guards entered and seconds later returned giving me permission to enter. As soon as I entered, I was amazed at the place. Several flowers surrounded the beautiful garden I was in. I didn't know that this part existed inside the palace. I thought as I looked around. Please follow the path, said the guard leaving me alone in the garden. I was a little confused by this as I thought one of the guards would be staying with me. But I still decided to ignore this. Walking through the garden I became more and more attracted to the flowers. After a while I saw two people having tea while chatting. One of them was a beautiful looking blonde man while the other was a beautiful woman with silver hair that resembled Emmys. Both were the king and queen of the country. As I slowly walked towards them, finally noticing me the king calls my name while keeping a gentle smile on his face. Rin, it is very good to see you again. It has been six years said the king with a smile on his face. My discord server for conversations and pictures of the protagonists of my works, as well as possible spoilers of my future stories. 2. 